And here we are doing something that I once again swore I would never do, which is the Infinity the Game faction tier list. For those who haven't seen the previous one of these, uh, about a year ago, in fact almost exactly a year ago, on request I did an Infinity the Game all factions tier list, ranking them just in the tier maker kind of standard, S through D rank. Someone in the comments section recently pointed out that it had been a year since that video had come out, and obviously the game has changed in that time. There have been new releases, we've had a new ITS season, we've had army updates, in some cases significant, and basically it was a point of request that this video get made again. And because uh, this kind of video really doesn't work if it's just me talking at a screen for an hour, I have Jordan from Geelong here for the hot takes. Uh, Jordan, say hello. Hey there, everyone. How's it going? I'm here to provide bad takes and bad takes alone. Um, so basically, the point of this video is to go through and we'll be ranking every single faction in Infinity the Game on an S3D scale. But really, the point is just to spend like five minutes talking about every single faction in Infinity. That's the real point of this content. It's to just touch on what the faction's strengths are, what the faction's weaknesses are, how we think they're positioned competitively slash on a power scale slash on an enjoyment scale uh, and what the standout qualities of the factions are of the factions are in terms of how we're actually going to be doing this ranking it'll be a little different from the first time around the first time around had a fairly like in-depth scale describing different ways a faction could be good in this case i actually just want to talk about power level where how how well the faction will perform in semi-competitive or competitive or basically in any game where your goal is kind of going to be to win so in terms of this definition um an s tier faction in this ranking is going to be a faction that is strong enough to carry a player basically if you uh, an s tier faction hypothetical s tier faction could get even an average player potentially all the way through to first place in a three or five round tournament an A rank faction is going to be basically the gold standard for competitive power. Not broken, but very, very good and unlikely to run into something that it can't handle if it's played well. A B tier faction is a faction that has strengths and is strong, but maybe doesn't necessarily have the depth of toolkit or either through a combination of bad luck or running into something that it doesn't have a means of dealing with, going to be a little more common. Basically, a B tier faction has a higher chance than an A tier faction of hitting something that scuppers a tournament run, even for a good player. Uh, a C tier faction is going to be a faction that it will definitely take a good player to win an event with or have a winning record with. And then a D tier faction is a faction that could theoretically sabotage even a very good player. If I think it would be impossible for me to win a casual-ish three-round event with a, with a faction, then that's a D tier faction. Uh, Jordan, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, that all makes sense to me, honestly. Now, let can we talk about the Toha zone, please? Yes. Yeah, so the the Toha <laughs> the Toha zone is the uh, it's complicated zone. And when we get to Toha, I'll talk about why specifically I put it in there. Actually, I can talk about it now. So to Toha, which we'll get to talk you about just this. Slam it to in them. there now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Toha are a faction that. Um, hey, let's just put them in there now. Uh, I think their strength is basically very contingent on how well your opponent knows how to deal with them. They like they they have definite weaknesses. They've got functionally no hacking. They top out at ballistic skill thirteen. Um, there's like tons of stuff in Toha that are limitations on the faction, but then there are really big strengths as well. And the basically the power level of Toha scales. They've got a good floor, but ultimately they scale almost linearly with how well your opponent knows them through to how much your opponent is standing there asking you to explain what a ligma is. Um, <laughs> and so to Toha, uh, a, like a, a player who knows Toha well um, is probably Toha's biggest weakness in a competition. But whether or not that exists in a local meta or even a big environment in a big tournament, like we, I played through five rounds of CanCon with 60 players, and I was fortunate enough not to hit a player who actually was like, no, I've been playing Toha recently, and I know what your bullshit does. So, hence the Toha zone. Uh, t this will also be the place where if we find any other factions where they really do have a, like, it's complicated, or it entirely depends on how common something else is in your meta, uh, we'll stick it there in the Toha zone. So with that, with that out of the way, and I don't know, maybe we'll come back to them um, because I feel like we should touch on Toha and talk about them a little bit more. But let's do that once we've gone through. Normally their place in this tier list would be, I think, after Aleph. So we might come back and revisit them or we might totally forget.
Uh, otherwise, this will be in the order that things appear in ARMY, with the exception of O12 and Starmada, which I have up first because they're new and they're super interesting, and they are one of the things that has changed the most since the last time this tier list was done. So, Vanilla O12. Jordan, where do you think that sits? Uh, below Starmata, wherever we end up putting it, I want to say Vanilla O12 is probably like high B tier, with Starmata definitely an A. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Um, o so if we think about the differences between the two, actually, because we can we can put them both up at the same time. Um, Starmata, and this is weird because there are a lot of the th a lot of things in Starmata that also exist in O12, where there was kind of an outcry. I think probably a pretty reasonable outcry when the robot was released and people had been told it would appear in O12, uh, but actually it was meant to be a, a Starmata exclusive profile. And so every yeah. every robot uh, every robot profile was put into vanilla O12, and robots are like excellent. Have you played against them significantly? Uh, I think I've had like I've had like one game where I played against them, but not particularly much. I heard about your experiences at Anza Cup as well, and I'm not looking forward to having someone just ram one head first down my throat. <laughs> They're um. The more I've played with them, actually, and I covered this in some videos on Anzac Cup, um, the more I leaned away from taking the. There, there are a bunch of there are a bunch of robot profiles, some of which are better geared to carrying an offense entirely by themselves. I ended up just taking the cheapest ones more often because the paramedic one has a template weapon and a Panzerfaust and a submachine gun, and you can use them as defensive pieces. I just have a Panzerfaust too. That's so silly. It's it's so having a Panzerfaust on a twenty three point model with no effectively like pseudo three wounds um yeah. <laughs> is super super good but the uh the thing about like, basically the thing about robots is that they are half of a sujan for half of a sujan's price which is still like really really good there are some capability gaps etc but yeah th this is one of the things like like we've got robots have appeared for starmada in the last year and robot and um, we've got the sarcos as well and there's another profile that's come out for Starmata relatively recently as well in the last update, right? The uh, Secu Droids? Yep, which are probably going to be like less ubiquitous than the yeah, the other the, two. They're cheap still... Link fellow, right? Like they make your like expensive dude Link a little bit more points efficient. Yeah, they they turn they turn an Epsilon Beta Link into you can viably run that three or five men. Um, I think the reason why I would put Starmata above O12 is normally normally. I would say vanilla factions, for me at least, vanilla factions tend to rank above sectorals unless there's something really, really compelling about the link options in sectorals. And the core links in, like most of the links in Starmata, I think are okay. I think the Kappa link is, you have to like light infantry links for that to be good. I think the um, Epsilon beta link is a sometimes food, but can be really fun. But genuinely what presently in this season a time of recording makes starmada better than o12 is its duos because yeah. it can link takamotos oko tactical awareness forward observer remotes with robots and that is just that is the foundation for such a lot of power it's just such a horrifying link to have to like effectively play into because it's like oh boy it's going to zoom, what is it, like 8-4 and like 6-6 six, six up the board? Like, uh, you just can't... 6-4 six, six, on the Takamotos, 8-6 okay, on the six, robot. Four. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so you spend one tactical awareness order and the robot is over the halfway line. Yep. And Good game, boys. You know, they're both potentially specialists or they have template weapons or... And because there's like... Because the roadbot is semi-durable, yeah, it's just excellent. It's really, really good. And the Zeta is a fantastic tag. It exists in both factions. I heard someone was talking shit about the Zeta recently. Yeah, in the Melbourne group chat, someone was wondering why the Zeta was that good. Okay, the Zeta is exceptional. The Zeta, the Zeta is combining the bulk of the best qualities of a Drakau and a Tikbalang. Um, it doesn't have memotism, it isn't BS-15, but like that, you can hang your hat on a Zeta in both of these factions. Um, what well, I... Th sorry, go. Uh, the other thing as well, Sarkos are exclusive to Starmata, right? Yep. I think that plays a part in it as well. Having a good, cheap midfield guy is always just such a huge benefit to a faction. And they are good. They are good skirmishers. Um, they, they're not, like, they could be more aggressively costed, but paying like 
20 something through like basically low 20s points costs for a mix of kind of cool stuff including wild parrots climbing plus shotguns it's like climbing plus especially that being the star Mata hat is really nice I didn't believe wild parrots were real until I actually had to see the profile. I thought someone was. I thought some nomad player was like taking the shit out of me. Yeah, but you're a morad morad player. You get to just ignore like two thirds of what they do. It's the best part. I don't care what your funny. I don't care what your funny space technology does. I'm immune. Um. So in terms of how O12 are differentiated from Starmata, obviously they are a vanilla faction. Therefore, they have access to a whole bunch of mercenaries, um, and to a variety of additional profiles, but. Playing one of the things, one of the trends in Infinity that I've noticed in my own list construction is that more and more when I play vanilla factions, I tend to make what one of my locals just calls the list, which is some warbands and some guns and some hackers. And it tends to all come like you can build just like almost any vanilla faction can, thanks to motorized bounty hunters and Libertos and you know, whatever core line troops you have and flash pulse bots and a tag can make the list that uses all of those things. But I think... Feeling very cold out right now. <laughs> but like, well, you play vanilla left differently to that, at least. But, like, that's that's a thing, right? There's, a, there's, a, there's an archetype that's just, like, I'm going to have two impetuous pieces, possibly bikers, and a Libertos, and, like, you put all of those things in there, and by the time you've hit 15 troopers, you've taken a tag to provide a gun, you've built the list. But O12 writes a kind of average version of the list in my experience um if i compare it to nomads trying to do the same thing uh where they have actual warbands or especially hackers lamb I, I wrote a bunch of o12 lists ahead of anzac cup and they all just felt like shitty versions of like, I, particularly hackers lamb look i saw this man's i my dms were quite literally full of rob just being like i think this might be a list <laughs> for like over a week <laughs> But yeah, so O12, definitely, I agree. It is a high B faction. Uh, it is a good faction. But I think there is a, in any given tournament, there's a chance where it's actually just going to be the, like, very slight inefficiencies in having to, like, the, there are a variety of profiles in O12 that are good, but they're fair. There's tons and tons of stuff in O12 that is like, that's cool and very fair for the points cost. And when you take 300 points of that, you're going to run into situations where your opponent has a strength they're leveraging and O12 is going to fall behind. And that's going to happen like once an event, probably. Do you feel like O12 is more reliant on the Zeta than Star Mata or vice versa? No, because O12... No, and that's actually probably one of the weaknesses of... So what would be a weakness of Star Mata if they didn't have the Zeta is crap guns, basically. There is there yeah. is a huge air gap between the Zeta and the next best gun in Starmata, but O12 have got a lot more to... Well, okay, sorry. O12 have got Gamma Troopers to fill that void, but Gamma Troopers are basically light tags, uh, and then they have Omegas below that. So there's a... But but you look at those profiles, you look at the Gamma Trooper, and you're like, that is excellent and fair. And you look at an Omega, and you're like, that is excellent and fair. <laughs> I'm seeing a... Uh, I'm seeing a pattern here. Yep. All I feel right. like more O12 than like Starmata players need to like start putting Hippolyta in their lists. She's I feel right. like that model will solve so many problems for them. That is probably worth experimenting. Definitely. All right. So we need to crack on because there are a lot of factions to go on with. Let's go to Vanilla Panoceania. Uh, we're going to move through the Panoceanian factions now and we'll start with Vanilla. I think last time around this got rated quite highly. Where do you see Vanilla Pano? Well, uh, it depends. Does Ivory have a gun to my head, or am I allowed to speak freely? Uh, you're allowed to speak freely. He can't hurt you, except in the comments. Fantastic. Uh, high B tier, probably. I would say maybe, maybe ahead of O12. The thing I think that puts Vanilla Pano potentially over the top of O12 is that O12 has Drago. O12 has the Zeta. Pano has the Dragos. Pano has the Kata. Pano has the Yotam. It's just the most pick your poison of like which gigantic gun do you want to feel today of a faction. There have been so one of the interesting things about Panoceania is I feel like it's um it's more and more unlocked. Uh people have gotten better at play, better at building lists and better at playing, better at finding the little edges in the faction where there are just random profiles that are like, oh that's that's really good. Uh, like case in point is the sixteen point Acondicemento regular hacker grenade launcher with a fast panda. Yes, and that's that's a piece where you're like, oh, it's just the line infantry hacker, right? Like, no, 
It does a lot of things. It's a line infantry hacker with a ballistic skill 12 grenade launcher and a fast panda for 16 points in one SWC. And there are a surprising number of profiles in Panoceania that that like cross that threshold of like even just randomly putting one helot into a list. Helots, yeah, I helots hate so helots. Good. They're so good. It feels like there's no good case scenario to like taking a fight with a helot. You're always like, well, I hope the dice work out for me on this. The, the, so, um, the thing about helots is, and we can this look, to get ahead of us and talk about Varuna. There is there is a a failure case. So the reason why I will not put Panoceania above a B tier, I think it's a good B. I think it's right next to O twelve, but I won't put them above a B tier. Is that in this category, a B tier is is a situation where you have a good faction, but you you have a chance of running into something that you aren't equipped to handle over the course of an event, and Panoceania's failure state is just losing some face-to-face rolls, and that's it. You don't have a plan B, because they're a faction of guns. And you can take lots of guns in Panoceania, but if you lose a face-to-face roll, and then lose it again... Like, if a riot gun missile launcher crits you, and then they crit you again, <laughs> and then they crit you again, you're that's it. The game is done. Uh, it was hugely unlucky, but you're screwed. The thing about Helots is that they they put that evil on your opponent. There is always a catastrophic failure in the wings when there's a light rocket launcher helot sitting under a camouflage marker. I have lost a I have lost a Raicho to a light rocket launcher helot. Yep. It was awful. Yep, yeah, yeah. It's horrifying. It's um so I think yeah, B B tier, good B tier. And that is a B tier is not a weak faction. It is a strong faction that is potentially going to hit something that it will struggle with over the course of an event. So yeah, strong. I think Vanilla Panoceania, strong faction. I'm actually going to put it just behind O12, but I think there's going to be some other Panoceanians I, coming in. I I would be very surprised if we didn't end up jostling entire tiers again by the end of this video. It's possible. Yep. Um, Shock Army of Aconte Cemento. Uh, I'm going to call this one probably an A tier. Um, I was about to say. I think they're the best Pano sectoral. Yeah, I I agree. Why do you think that? Uh, I think they have the single... I think in terms of, like, a light infantry core, they have the best light infantry core probably in the game. Yep, definitely. Very close. You could maybe make an argument about, like, OSS with the Dakini link, but... You, it's uh, kind you're of stretching Apple's the definition story. of light infantry at that point, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you also have two of the best tags in the game. Yep. Just in your faction for free. Um, you've got... Incredible skirmishes, because you have Dart for some reason. You also have Nagas, though I don't rate Nagas particularly highly, but they're still very good. And Peacemakers. Uh, peacemakers, you have the Knight of Montessa. Like, you have the... Do you get the Paramedic Knight of Montessa in Shock Yeah, Army? all of them. All of the Montessa profiles, I believe, are in a Contra Cemento. Yeah, like, I don't know... Yeah, I, I played against the faction once, and even though my opponent didn't make the best of it, I was horrified the entire time of, like, what could go wrong here. So probably I think the biggest risk on Shock Army is is you generally speaking will spend um four and a half to five SWC on guns, and that will only really ever get you three guns. And usually one or two of those will be Sapper Snipers, which are exceptional, but are a little hard to be active with. So you are contingent on the tag sometimes carrying the day. But I think it's still very possible. Like, I've seen double tag a Condescimento list, and they're terrifying. And even then, you have the, like, happy medium lists where it's one Sapper Sniper, one tag, and one other gun. Uh, yeah, so you, you usually have enough redundant firepower. And on top of that, because of the Peacemakers, Close Assault, Knights, Mon- Knights of Montessa, uh, the fact that you'll often just randomly have spec fire in your core links because of the Sapper Sniper, which means it's BS-15 spec fire. There are a few more ways out of a bad spot for a Contesamento, but more than that, I think they just trade on quality in a way that is very, very pan Oceanian, where Vanilla Pano is usually going to be like, we have a tag, and that's our plan A, and then there are a bunch of like other useful niche things happening in Vanilla Pano where you can, like, pull value out of the vanilla qualities of the faction, a Contesamento is going to have a very good tag and a very good link and potentially some very good skirmishes and some very good remotes and even some very good hacking. Uh, a Contesamento is trading on quality. It's just trading on 
obvious, powerful strengths in a way that's, I think, really strong. And yeah, probably makes it, probably makes it, by a small margin, the most powerful pan Oceanian sectoral. I think so. I think it's just, I think there's just a lot there. I think there's a lot to explore with that faction as well. I think sometimes Pano players will get bogged down on, like, tags and stuff. But I think Icona Cemento is surprisingly deep in all the things you can take. Like, the list I played against at CanCon wasn't playing a tag, and it still felt really good. Mm -hmm. Whereabouts would you put military orders? Uh, high C, low B. Yeah, I think, I think it I is the worst that. pano sectoral. And I think my heuristic for pano sectorals is how good is your tag? And a seraph is just okay. I would I would probably say it's a little less than okay, but you know what? You are the one who is making this video. <laughs> uh no, I think okay, so I think you could say that the seraph is a little average compared to some other tags, but it's still a remote presence main battle tag with super jump off of a silhouette seven. Uh, Aguija is an okay tag these days, and probably Aguija is a little better than a Seraph, but the Seraph is still, you know, potentially strong. But you don't even see the Seraph in military orders lists because a military no. orders list can't support a Seraph. Military orders have the same problem they have had for what feels like their entire existence, which is they don't have a backbone to the faction. They can take one seven-point Fugazi Dronbot, and then you are scrambling for orders. And the Knight Commander did not fix that. The Knight Commander is is attacks, uh, if you want to take it. It's not, sorry, not attacks, but like it doesn't give you any meaningful order advantage. There's just no way to get meaningful order advantage in, um, in Knights. And so... Everything you do with the faction is going to be playing against that tide where you're like, there's some really cool stuff in here. Hospitalers are like pretty cool. And Montessa yes. Knights might be in other places, but they're pretty cool. But I've got 10 orders. Oh, hell. Yeah. The other thing as well uh, that I think bogs down military orders to an extent is that Joan is a trap and people keep trying to make it work. Yeah. Yeah. I would actually, honestly, the more I, the more I look at them and... The more I talk to Panoceanian players about them, I honestly th I'm leaning towards Deferson as probably my preferred lieutenant. Which means I've you have. Heard that. I think, yeah, like Ivory makes a good case for that, for example. Ivory but, does, yeah. But genuinely, Hacker, Trinity, like you have, uh, it, it means you have a lieutenant who can be killer hacked, which has some issues basically with it. But he's whip 14, and he just does so much more than. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think, and he's he's as expensive as Joan. Yeah, something interesting Ivory was actually saying to like give him a bit more credit. Military orders really, really, really wants a fusilier core. <laughs> yeah. Yep. They um, want like the missile launcher, the sniper, and they want three dudes. <laughs> yes. Yep. Uh, they used to be fusiliers in military orders, and they phased them out to add in the croziers as the unique military order light infantry. But yeah, military orders Military orders would be a much more complete faction if it could play like a version of um, you know, other Pan-Oceanian sectorals, but with knights as the, you know, secondary option. Yeah, to give a credit where credit's due, though, Teutonic Knights are fucked. Yep. Those, like, oh my god. Here is my Harris of, like, three dudes. They These three dudes can do basically everything. On my first turn, I start them unlinked, I impetuous, move them up the board individually as a free order, and then I link them, make them not impetuous, and now they're going down your throat. Good luck. I really like Teutonic. There's like there's a lot of things in military orders that I really like. And if if like anyone who's listening to this plays military orders, I get it. Like I get why you play that faction. The aesthetic and there are like a ton of individual profiles that are cool. Like I just I love hospitalers. I love the idea of just this is a Pan-Oceanian infantry that we have discounted with Frenzy and still gotten some close combat skills. I, I yep. love Hospitalers. Trinitarians uh, as well. Yep. Like, has Faction has Dart, too. Like, um, <laughs> But yeah, like, to if, if... I think we would see, like, it, we would immediately elevate military orders to a solid middle-of-the-pack, upper-middle-of-the-pack faction if they got either Fusiliers or even just AVA-3 for Ghazi. If there was just some fluff about the Catholic Church investing in robots or some stuff, um, and they went AVA three for Ghazi, you've you've at a snap solved easily the biggest challenge, 
like the some faction. priest realized you could like throw some fucking holy water on a fugazi and you're like i've done it i have solved our points issues yep yeah, the Catholic Church has ordained a whole bunch. Yeah, they're, they're ordained ministers now. You can take three Fugazis. They're ordained ministers. We strapped a holy Bible to the flash pulse. Yep. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna move past the obvious joke about flushing priests and on to Neo Terra, um, Neo Terran Capitoline Army. Uh, I feel like this is probably a good B faction, but what do you think? Uh, I. Well, I mean, are we are we counting the fact that you cannot buy any of the models for this faction? Uh, ignore those because Infinity is a proxy friendly game. Fantastic. Uh, I would say above Vanilla Pano, probably maybe between Vanilla Pano and O twelve. I don't know where you yep. did on that though. No, that seems reasonable. Um, they have they have a good fundamental core. They have Fusilier links. They have one and a half good tags. Um, the Squallow is good. The Ulan is kind of a little a little mediocre, but nothing with a BS-15 HMG and Fwebac will be bad. It's just a bit overcosted. And then there's a bunch of like interesting tech and interesting heavy infantry, and like Auxilla are in the faction, which is excellent. Uh, but I think unlike... There's a little bit less raw strength to trade on in neo Terra than there is in Shock Army of the The quality of the tags is a little lower, so your your high watermark for strength is not quite as high. And the unique elements, although they're good, like I love Auxilla. Um, I've loved Auxilla for as long as they've existed. They It's going to be more difficult for neo Terra to trade on strength to win an event. Um, and I, th- I think we're going to end up in a situation where Shock Army of Consumento is going to be kind of like at the bottom of the A tier. But yeah, neo- neo Terra falls a little behind them. It's it's interesting to me, like, Neo Terra feels a little bit like a Conta Cemento, but you pay a little bit more and get a little bit more. Like, Bolt's so much better as a core than regulars, but you're paying more for it, right? A lot more, yeah. You're paying so much more for it. Uh, I would make an argument that having a Burst 3 weapon on your main battle tag isn't a great, isn't a great investment, personally, but, you know... <laughs> I have been yelled at enough by Trent and Ivory to where I have learned that trying to confront Pano Brain Rot just doesn't work. The um the Ulan is a fact. Oh, it's been a long time. It's been a long time since I played with an Ulan. I I love the like. Con- I think conceptually it is my favorite tag in terms of the idea of like a pop up tank destroyer style. It also has the coolest name of any tag. The, the Klaus Switz Ulan. It's but, a very cool name. Um. It does, it pays, because of the way that Infinity cost formulas treat two primary weapons, the cost of any gun in Infinity is high. And so anytime you see a model, like this is why, for example, combi rifles and light shotguns are surprisingly expensive. Uh, if you take that and you say, what if we had a heavy machine gun and a flareback, that is a lot more expensive than a multi-HMG. Yeah, and despite the fact three, that... three stick worth of weapon on one model, right? Yep. Like... And so that what that means is that the Ulan, the Ulan, if you if you took those weapons off the Ulan and gave it a, a multi HMG, it would probably cost like something like seventy points, and be very good at that cost because camouflage on a tag is excellent, but it doesn't have those things. It's clocking in at I can't remember it's like eighty something or even ninety. It's very expensive, right? Uh, give me two seconds. I'll just go to Infinity Army really quickly. But that sound, I was looking at it. Literally today, because I was trying to figure out how to spell Ulan. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Uh, it's it is a very very it is pricey tag. Eighty eight points. Yep. Um, I would be willing to bet that it would come in at something like seventy six if it had a multi HMG rather than those two guns. And at that point, it would be premium. But it's not, and it's just one of those cases where you're paying a lot more for some things in the Terra and only getting a little more than the nearest competitor. And, you know, I would almost pay 88 points for it if it had a HRMC instead of the two weapons it has. Mm-hmm. All right. So next up, we have Varuna Immediate Reaction Division. I... Second best Pano Sectoral, maybe? I don't know. I don't uh, know how so you this feel is, about it. This is very contentious. I, I think, depending on who you ask, you could easily argue that it, it would fit anywhere between A and B tier. And you will have some people who would probably even argue that it fits in the C. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to pause for a moment and think about what I've said. Okay, cool. Um, 
God damn it. That went if that... You, you you acknowledged it, you gave it power. If you had have just moved on, it wouldn't have mattered, but now you've acknowledged it. If I'd exists. thought about it in advance, I'd have been <laughs> so happy with that. But I, I didn't. It just came out and I have to I have to live with I have to live with the consequences of being scuppered by my own pun. Um yep. so the Varuna has a cutter, which is an excellent tag. Cutter is fantastic. Things, it, it's truly excellent. Um where Varuna historically struggle is close assault. The the only close assault elements that they have are Montessa Knights and Peacemakers. And although both of those are good, they're very hackable. Which means that Varuna can kind of struggle in a game where either A, the cutter is neutralized, or B, the cutter just doesn't have an opportunity to go brr. I mean, that lack of close assault is epitomized in the fact that the cutter doesn't have any sort of close yep. assault option. Literally no weapon that can fire outside of HMG range bands. Um, yep. I, there's also, over people have, people have taken a little bit of time, I think, to find, and I, I still don't think many people have found a second Varuna list where S- something that isn't attacked. So you go. Oh, something that isn't attack. Okay, because I was about to, I was about to talk about uh the Ed Swallows list that he took to Anzac. Because I really like that as a way to like pick out like Morans on rooftops and give them a way to sort of breach that midfield where you otherwise would be have to, would have to be really scared of like yep. all of the hackers sitting around. I I agree, and that that paid off really well for him as well. Um, the the Squallos to sorry what um. What uh, what Jordan's talking about there is the player who I think came Ed who I think came second at Anzac Cup, which is the most recent yep. sort of semi large ta- two day tournament we had in Australia. Um, the first list was a cutter, but the second list was a squallos with grenade launcher, and that that what that does is it gives you it's not close assault, but it gives you a tool that Varuna values more than a Conta Cemento or Neo Terra etc., which is it gives you a a tool for engaging things that you can't just go burr with a big gun against. And he used it to very good effect in some games. I know Are you during... saying, Rob, yep. that maybe you shouldn't always be engaging with maximum velocity at 30 <laughs> inches away? Uh, I, I mean, Panoshanian players may need to be confronted by that reality eventually, yes. Um, oh no, <laughs> terrible. The, the other thing actually I want to mention about Varuna is um, I spent a little bit of time mucking around with them recently, and I, I actually have found the first Panoceanian list that I have wanted to play in like three years. Um, and it turns out that if you take... Basically because the one of the... This is not like something that is used particularly often, but um, Kamau HMGs are only one SWC. And Wait, really? Yeah, you can, you can fit a lot in a list. Uh, most pan like basically every other pan list is going to have to settle for three guns. But you can fit something like four good quality weapons and still take helots in Varuna if you take, like, I think it's, I, my list had two Kamau HMGs. I don't know if either of them were even linked because they're fine unlinked. A Kamau HRL, an Orc, Fwebak, and two helots. Um, Ugh. and that's like, that felt, I want to play that. That felt re- cause you lose a command HMG, you've got another one and two other guns. That is a, there are a lot of single wound elements and like one multi wound element there, but they're all BS 13 based with imitism and four guns makes it very hard for you to get locked out of the firepower game. And I want to try that list. I think that's got some serious potential. And the rest of the list had, cause they're like, you know, they're 22 to 28 points, like, that's totally fine. You can fit plenty else. I had Patsy for the NCO water, etc. And yeah. two helots. What's your lieutenant in that list? Uh, it's just, just a fusilier. fusilier. Yeah, just a fusilier yeah. in the call. In uh, fusilier in the call link with the orc we're back. Um, oh, okay, sure. And... Is that a pure link or is that no? Impure? But it, you know, orc's going to be BS fifteen burst three. Well, yeah, exactly. So I think that list might have some issues with like, for example, you've got one gun that will really threaten a tag. But you could tinker with it based on local environment. I think ultimately Varuna probably probably doesn't sit outside the B tier, but I put them above Neo Terra. Okay, interesting. What about Svalheimer? Oh man, I really, really like a linked Kahu. 
Like if I was gonna play Pano, that's the that's the sector I'm playing because the idea of linking a Kahu makes me so happy on like an internal level. Uh, also, the Yodam is sick. It's um, but oh man, it's really hard. I think I think it probably like it's probably here, um, just yeah. above just okay. above O twelve. Uh, so Svalheimer is a faction with some big strengths and some big weaknesses but so i have been i have been exposed to i think something like 8 months of Svalheimer list iteration from uh from Lockie in Queensland okay who is a, a dedicated Svalheimer player and uh to talk a little bit about Lockie i don't know if he'll watch this video he might but he he's is very a, pro Yodam, right well so what what Lockie is before anything else is a scientist um that is his educational and career background he works, I think, for CSIRO at the moment, having done some time in private industry as well. Um, but he is he is a consummate scientist. And I, the reason why I can tell he is good at his job, apart from anecdotes about how he has to come and like make people obey um, experimental discipline correctly, etc., <laughs> is that he builds lists like a scientist. I have I have a chat history that is eight months of Svalheimer list codes with like one change per list it's like one thing changes in every single list uh, as the variables are slowly tested and what he, the where he is going with Svalheimer list these days is kahu are present um, but they aren't necessarily the focus yotam are always present in every single list sometimes there are two of them it's just the thing you have to flex in that faction it feels like because if, if someone can't deal with a yotam you're just going to get walked over to such an enormous extent. But the the thing that Svalheimer has that actually might even elevate them up to the bottom of the A tier is, so they have no camouflage. They, they have basically non-existent midfield, but they have peacemakers, so that's fine. But Svalheimer are Panoceania with multiple excellent to okay close assault options. Because that faction has Lankai, who is an excellent close assault option? Shona Corona, who is okay, and Gunnar, they're, who is okay. Hmm? They're the reason why Vanilla Pano gets the Ankai. That's good to know, actually. Yes, yeah, yeah he's a Svalor Um and Svalor. Svalor. Anyway, he's he's. I think the monastery. No, I don't know. I don't know the background well enough. But um, yes, he he was the bonus model that came out with the um Winter Four versus White Banner pack. Um, and yes, Svalheimer is the reason why Vanilla Panel gets Lankai. Ugh. And so Loki's lists have morphed to include more and more and more close assault to the point where he's even taking Gunnar. Gunnar is like not a fantastic piece. He's a 34 point dogged model, but he can fight in melee. He has close assault capabilities. He has climbing plus. And he has Doggon and is a specialist operative. And when you have Panoceania with two super jumping and one climbing plus melee killers, none of whom are hackable and one of whom has stealth, then you have Panoceania that just is completely comfortable playing in a part of the game that like scuppers Varuna, for example. If you took Varuna and you put Lankai in it, it would immediately catapult to like a bottom of the A tier faction. And Svalheimer sure. doesn't have that stuff that Varuna doesn't have here lots, but like it has multiple, multiple good quality close assault. Uh, on top of that, if you want to play military orders, you should just play Winterfour because you have Hospitaller Knights in that. Uh, you don't have Teutons, to be fair, but if you want to play some Knights, Svalahama lets you flex into them and they're not bad by any means when you have a light infantry core to back them up. I think, I think we're going to go bottom of the A tier, but remind me to keep pushing Winterfor down as more things come into this space. That sounds about right to me. It's it's very close, and like you know, local. This is one of those things we could talk about this a whole bunch. There is often not going to be a lot that separates A tier from B tier because what in this kind of like scaling system a B tier a B tier is a faction that just might let you down and if that never materializes if you just and in any given tournament you have to get a little bit lucky to get all the way through it if the piece of bad luck never materializes there's nothing to differentiate a good B faction from a good A faction but yeah, um, if you're a Varuna player and you just never run into a Datarazzi like all five rounds of an event you're going to be the happiest yep. man on earth okay 
Um, we need 15,000 tons of metric salt. Uh, um, Yu Ching. I think, I think like high A tier. Like, okay, sell me, on, uh, sell me on high A tier. Above or below Starmata? That I don't actually know. But having watched Taj play White Banner for so long and then go, okay, White Banner look interesting. I'm curious about Vanilla. And then looking at everything that that faction gets, right? Like, you get... Uh, what are the Explodey Boys from ISS? Kuangxi. Yeah, you get the Kuangxi, you get a Hack Tao, you get the Dao Ying LT with plus one order, it's a Camo State Lieutenant, like, you have the vanilla, you have the Yujing Beast Hunter, that model is utterly cracked. Like, I don't care if someone has a bad game with the with the vanilla uh, Yujing Beast Hunter. Hi, Rob. But it's just so good <laughs> on paper, right? Like, a model can't be that good on paper and then just yep. always underperform. Yan Ho, Blue Wolf. Yeah, Yan Ho, Blue Wolf. We like, haven't even mentioned the Sujan yet. I haven't even met, yeah, haven't even mentioned, mentioned that you get Susan as well for reasons. Like, in terms of vanilla factions that play Annihilation with extra steps, it's really hard to name something that's better than Yu Jing at doing that. So I'm going to make a case for putting Yu Jing in the Toha zone. Ooh, um, okay. And the reason is, every single model that we just extolled the virtues of is not a, not a specialist, or is not a practical button-pushing specialist. And so Yu Jing, how well Yu Jing perform, in my experience, is almost entirely contingent on how well the mission mix lets them play all the pieces play, that they want yeah. to play. Yeah, well, I mean, I can refer you back to the meme of the space wizard can't push the button if you disable his hand. No, and and I th I think if you really, really try to, you can probably push Yu Ching, particularly in this ITS season, because the Takemoto's rule exists. Yeah, and they the Takemoto's take... is the Takemoto's is just so helpful. Yep, two um two forward observer tactical awareness specialist remotes. Uh, it is actually difficult to fit two of them in Yu Ching lists sometimes because Yu Ching more than any other faction desperately want 16, 17, 18 troop slots because yep. of Quangxi and Shaolin monks and everything. Um, but I'm I'm going to make the case we're going to put Yu Ching in the Toha zone because their power is really contingent on if they get to fully flex into what they want to do, or if they have to compromise. Because if they have to compromise, then more and more of their list is pulled away from their power pieces, and they are more likely to run into a situation where they're just hoping that some shitty whip... That, like, the, frankly, um, the Yuching failure state is that a Takimoto's forward observer remote fails four whip rolls in a row. And that can 100% <laughs> happen. Yes, it can. Absolutely. Um, they're, they're such a fun faction to play and to build for. And they have such a... Like, I haven't even... I don't think I've played uh, with a Hacktow HMG more than, like, twice in N4. Because I love the Yanhuo. I think it's an awesome piece. But, like, the Hacktow is incredible. And I'm not even putting in lists because I've gone ahead and filled that space up with Bishia, who is a specialist. We didn't mention, but she is a specialist, to be fair. She's very good too. Um, you know, Bishia and Moang and Yanhuo and like I don't have points left for a hack and Sujan. Um, and I could cut one of those, I guess, to fit in a Yanhuo, and I probably should. But uh so fit in a um you a mean hacked a hack, out. yeah, hacked out. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Is the is the lieutenant situation because I haven't played vanilla Yujing, I've just been watching from the outside. Is the lieutenant situation a hundred percent of the time it is a Dao Ying in a camera marker hiding on top of a building? Um, no. Because okay. so, uh, I think if you if you were to sample online meta lists, you would probably find that it looks like it is. But I would argue that it shouldn't be because the mo one of the most valuable resources for a Yu Ching list is troop slots, and you have a, at least a couple of choices for active lieutenants. And just just wear it. Just don't lose them. Just just play the piece. Um, Skill think, issue. Yeah, right. Take a. Um, so I'm a little antsy taking a Yanhuo lieutenant because they do only have two wounds, but you have options for a Yanhuo, a Guija, um, or a uh, Moang lieutenant as powerful active LT pieces. Um, and 
the value proposition isn't the same it would be in other factions because um, Yu Ching just like randomly have NCO on everything. Uh, if you have a Moang or Bishia or a Hak Tao in your list, you have an NCO. There is an insane amount of NCO. It's yeah, more than any other faction. Um, but uh, but if you cut the Dao Ying, you free up one more troop slot for a Quangxi or a Shaolin Monk or a Takamotos or a Longya ambush remote. And I think well, who I knows? Th maybe an actual specialist, right? Um, I think ultimately, like probably 80% 80, 80 of Yu Ching lists probably should have Dao Ying because it's good, it's safe, and it plays with the NCOs. But there are some other non obvious options that I think are pretty pretty worth exploring. Uh, even yeah. potentially, probably not, but even potentially, I, I had a lot of fun with Marksman Sun Tzu uh, early in the edition. I don't know oh, if I'm okay. that much. Okay. He was a gun. He just like listen. He would never go to dead in one order. You could doctor him up if you wanted to. There are lots of good organic. Like if you take him and a Yanhuo and Major Luna, you have one doctor pulling a lot of duty, and he just randomly killed things all the time and was a strategic. Yeah. There's another thing we didn't talk about. Major Luna. That model is also cracked. She's excellent. Yeah. And what um what's uh what Sun Tzu do does it basically he he gives you the same ability to run lots of irregulars that Saladin does in Hakislam. Except that he he's more expensive, but has a gun um, that you can actually use if you want to. And you, if you look at like Hack Islam, we'll get to uh, irregular capital of the world. But you look at Yu Ching's irregular options, and you're like, uh, name, I'll have yeah, I'll have a Libertos, <laughs> two Shaolin monks, and a Beast Hunter, please. And yeah, that yeah. becomes very viable with uh, with Sun Tzu. Yeah. yeah, name me a faction that wants a model with inspiring leadership more than Hack Islam. I'll wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. Okay, so Imperial Service. You've probably played against this more than I have. Didn't Val go on yeah. a big? Yep. Oh, yeah. Don't look. Get, do you mind if I just say one overarching thing about the Yujing sectorals as we get into them? Go for it. I think personally, White Banner is the best, and then you can argue between IA and Imperial Service as the next best. I don't think White Banner is as good as Vanilla, though. I don't know how you feel about that statement as a whole, but that's sort of where I'm at. I well, let's jump to White Banner then. Um, I have played a few White Banner games recently, and I have enjoyed them. But the more I have played with them, the more they have just turned into lists that I could actually just write in vanilla. Um, where and and that that realization has been a little sobering, actually. There are where... factions that suffered a lot from the five team changes. It feels like. I mean, you can. Uh, I I have never personally loved taking four light infantry and stapling a heavy infantry gun to them, but you can do that still with a um, a Shangji and it's fine. Or you can run three trooper links. Like a, a link, I actually wouldn't mind trying is Shangji Takaware Tinbot HMG, uh, and then a paramedic and a um, paramedic and a hacker line infantry, and just it's a three trooper link. It's a core, but it's a three trooper core. And it runs around doing things that, that it wants to do over the course of the game. Um, yeah, it just walks around the table very efficiently. Speaking of walking around the table very efficiently, White Banner gets the Monk Links, and yep. those are so good. Liankai is such a house, and then just staple, then removing the downside of Impetuous and just letting him be a MIM3 model that gets cover as well. So I have played a few games now where... Lang so here, here is what I've observed about the Monk Links in White Banner. Uh, you'll play a game and you'll go, oh, that was so cool. And then you'll look and actually think about what they accomplished. And you'll realize that actually Lang Kai is so cool. And <laughs> uh, nothing like... So I had one game against Toha. I've had too many games against Toha with, with White Banner, by the way. It's it's messing with my ability to... Um, when when you're when you're learning a faction and you're like, this faction has lots of stealth melee, that's really cool. And then McCalls are better than you at CC, uh, and so you can't stealth into CC under smoke and kill them. It really messes with your ability to interrogate a faction. But I had one game where Lang Kai started in a link with a monk, and I broke it immediately for the free impetuous order. So the monk in the order phase, link is established, monk is regular, generate your orders, proceed to impetuous phase, break the link, and run Lang Kai. He jumped into that the window. Uh, yep, yeah, that's the f so. I think it, I, I believe. It's been a while since I looked it up, but at least, and I may be just remembering from the previous edition. But yes, you have your strategic phase, orders phase, impetuous phase. So strategic phase, you generate your orders. 
um, impetuous phase, and then you spend your orders. So you can make a link, make everything regular, break the link, take your impetuous orders. That's actually, that's massive. You can do that with uh, more at hungry links as well. Just yeah. By the way. Well, I, I assumed, right? If yep. you can do it with one, you have to be able to do it with the other. That's yep. so cool. Um, but, uh, so what happened is I broke, th I broke the link so that Lenkai could jump into a window. And then he basically crawled across the table uh, and stabbed a Taquil Lieutenant to death. And I'm like, that was super cool. And I had to break the link. Like the the value proposition of the link is that is basically plus one command token because I didn't have to convert that monk sword to regular. Uh, that feels kind of average actually. And the Jinko link as well has just been. It, it's in part it's because I've had so many damn games against Toha where they can't do the thing they want to do, which is smoke up the board, yeah, and stab I, a bunch I of feel, stuff. Yeah, I feel like you're like sample expression of is not like, high right is now. being yeah. completely polluted I, by the it fact that it should be so it. good it, they, like, they all have stealth they can just crawl into <laughs> melee like, and stab something off. and freaking McCall's are too high and I can't kill them in close combat um, I, I'll give them I'll give them probably a I think White Banner are a very good probably top of the B tier but but I don't th I don't know if I, you've seen that I, I don't I don't know if I'd even put them top of B tier. Like I'd probably put them maybe between Varuna and like Neo Terra, maybe. I don't know. They attack better than Varuna does, so <sighs> it's I, hard. I would put them they actually are very similar because they they if you think about the similarities between them and Varuna, um Long Long Yar are excellent, and they're the only sectoral that gets it. Long Yar's so good. Yeah. And they have smoke and they have the Guija, like actually, the Guija Lieutenant, I love. Now I really like playing that. Um, yeah, I'll put them above. I'll put them ab above Varuna, probably. We can move it later if we need. But to, it's but close. I, yep. I, I'm in a similar. I'm in a similar mind. Um, <sighs> definitely, definitely enjoy them. But uh, yeah, they're they're Man. they're. Honestly, I think. Like in by the terms of the terms of the, like the the metric, right? What is going to what is going to scupper a white banner? Um, a white banner run through a tournament is it's actually if you just run into the game where your opponent scraps on a little longer than you expect and the monk links all have to break to go and do things and you run into like turn three and you're just you're just a bit short on everything and it actually it is it, they also have frankly they have the yuching issue where a lot of the time, your specialists are forward observer remotes. Jinquo is a specialist, which yeah. is good, but there's not a lot of, like, and the Guijo is a specialist. Uh, I, think, I think White Banner gets off a little easier, because you have Tian Gao's that hide in links. I have never taken a Tian Gao in White Banner, I because I'm Ooh. not running, I'm just running monks as my links, but yeah, that's yeah, true. Sure. That's true. Uh, I think we... I think one of the other things that would give White Banner a bit of pause in a tournament is uh, MSV guns, just in general. You don't have any way... You Your ways to avoid... An MSV gun aren't fantastic, and then especially something that's higher BS than you as well. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. Because um, like I can't count the number of games I had against Taj where I put Atlanta on the table and he just stared. He, he just stared at it. It was like I don't know what to do. Playing with a Guija gives you a solve, but on the yeah. other hand, it's very possible. Like if you if you put a Guija, like a Guija can just lose four face to face rolls in a row against Atlanta. And if you yep. run into a mimetism uh, ARO piece, it starts getting a real pain in the ass. Yeah, like Nalf or something like that. Um, Nalf should never be an ARO piece early in the no, game. No, sorry, not Nalf. What's the uh, what's the other one? The one that's Mim Six. Uh, yeah, Armand Lemuet. Uh, actually, that yeah, one. even for example, not to pick Toha for any particular reason, but like a Nickel Sapper Sniper can just suck an entire turn out of a oh that banner. asshole. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the other thing we completely forgot to talk about this, uh, Rushi's. White Banner have Rushis. Yep. Yep. Um, almost actually every every uh, every Yuching faction has Rushis, but oh, White they? Banner have them. Rushi with lots of smoke. Yes. And and really oh, easy boy. access to Impetuous Smoke. Oh man, ISS, I feel Val watching me. I don't know. It's somewhere between bottom of the B, top of the C tier. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably better than Military Orders. It is. No I, no I, faction with two Sujans and the orders to fuel them can be truly bad. Yeah. So the problem is my views of ISS are polluted by the fact that it was Val playing ISS. So <laughs> I played against a Sujan exactly once, 
and every other time his best gunfighter has been a Dakini HMG with marksmanship in a Harris. <laughs> oh, I love Val's list so much. Um, I do as well. He came third at CanCon, like yep. he's doing something right. Um, he uh, he is he is very. Cl- I think he's within a, a short amount of time of reaching the like Hector level of. You look at the list and you're like, this is a pile of this is this is just a pile of units. Like there's no obvious interact. Like what is going on here? And then you play and you're like, how am I losing this game? Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the yeah. Hector. Like that's the Hector phenomenon. You look at like Hector's Pan Oceania list that won BrizCon, and you're like, what the hell is going on here? And then he, he wanted to play Jean and Mendoza. <laughs> that was that was it. And it just and it all it all comes to, in but Hector. Hector is the kind of player who understands the game just in a way that's almost fundamentally different from other... Like, he, the the way that he thinks about the game and the way that he knows how to do certain things allows for... You know, he's, he's playing he's playing 3D chess and we're all playing checkers. Um, yeah. Val, Val likes being tricksy and doing things that other people aren't doing. It doesn't always work out, but boy howdy does he like doing it. He... he I, I mean, I perfectly sympathize. I've, I've... In another game that I have been playing recently, a non-Infinity game, um, someone said something was good, and I'm like, well, now I can't play it, can I? Because the internet said it was good, so I have to play something different because of self-expression reasons. I'm I'm helpless. Um, I I don't I don't know what that's like at all. Fucking inject an Achilles straight into my veins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just give me the good shit. Just um, give me the good models. Here is okay. Here is why ISS. I think it's I think it's it's B or C tier, but. This is why. ISS have some very, very good pieces. And for example, they have access to two Sujans. But what they don't have is any... Like, if you if you use your Sujans, you will run into the Sujan problem, which is that you can cautious move through a repeater area, but once you have to, once you have to attack, uh, dealing with stuff like Morans, or even just repeaters in a deployment zone with a couple of hackers behind them, Every other faction in Yuqing has, or like White Banner, sorry, White Banner and Yuqing have ways of dealing with that. You know, Lang Kai can comfortably break through. He can dodge the dodge the crazy koala, jump into CC, stab them around to death. Bam, problem you solved. You don't even you don't even need to use Liang Kai, right? You can just throw a monk at the problem. Yep. What happens? Oh no, my my eight point model got blown up by a crazy koala. Monks, monks I guess cost, we'll send in monks cost five or six points. Sorry, I sorry, yeah, I guess They're I'll send so my good. other six point monk to go kill that Moran now that the crazy koala is dead. But um ISS ISS you can like kind of do that with Quang Shi, but it's not the same. And on top of that, long range firepower in ISS is just kind of weirdly absent. Um, they don't have I think actually they're one of the few sectorals in the game outside of Ariadna that just don't have a tag. And their linked firepower is just not there, like a, a crane. I'm, I'm being, I'm being completely serious and say that I think probably the best linked gun in that army is a Dakini HMG with marksmanship. Yeah, yeah, it actually is. Um, so I, IS, ISS more than definitely. Actually, no, we're gonna put this in C tier because it hits that criteria of ISS is not just. It's not just possible that ISS will run into something that exploits their weakness during a tournament. It's actually kind of likely. Um, yeah. Kind of like military orders, where there's just too much of a chance over the course of like five rounds that the fact that you are just missing, as much as there are some big strength in ISS, and two Sujans is a big strength in ISS, you're just missing certain things that will get you through those like difficult games where your opponent is trying to. A cheap engine, yeah. Yeah, for it, <laughs> like yeah. So like the like Sophie's Sophie's good, right? But you pay dearly for the fact that she's a doctor engineer. Yep. Yeah, and no win the cap and etc. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's grim. I I don't like Sophie. <laughs> um, no, I have to agree with that. Uh, thirty five. She's like thirty five points, isn't she? Uh, I think she's a little less expensive than that because. I always ran into the issue of uh, in Vanilla Aleph between her and Pavati, and there is a distinct difference in how expensive they are. Mm. She's still, uh, she's still extent. I mean, Doctor Worm for twenty four points is very affordable, but thirty one. Yeah, that's still that's a lot of points for support. That's a lot of points, yeah. That once you once you add on like 
one or two yard bots, you're in the 30, 37 points, and you're like you're well like you you know you're oh, that's it's, more than ten percent. Sorry, she sh she should cost like thirty seven points because you're almost always taking two yard bots. Yeah, she does. She doesn't. She's not even shocking you neither. <laughs> All right, so last of the um, Yuqing Sectorals, we have Invincible Army. I think Invincible Army are so fucking cool. The, like, the aesthetic of them is so fucking cool, of the enormous guns, big heavy infantry link. They have the best named model in the game, in my opinion. Who is that? Uh, Crit Cockram, because his <laughs> name is Crit fucking Cockram. <laughs> yep, yeah, yep, fair. And I realize while I've been talking, they have been put solidly in the D tier. I actually, I, I not only because you are expounding them. Um, whereabouts do you think they go? Uh, uh below ISS, maybe above. I, I they think feel... I think they're above ISS, but not by a ton. Okay. Um, okay. Interesting. So, if you look at the weaknesses, both of both of those factions hate running into a repeater net. Yes, but for different IS reasons as well. Yeah, but I ISS hates running into a repeater net or good Overwatch. And um, Invincibles at least have a good solid plan for squaring off in the noble art of fisticuffs and fighting someone who will fight them on even terms. They are totally fine with taking fair fights. And if you give them... The, if, you are, if you are the kind of player... Who has who has learned that a null defense means that you won't get shot, and that's all that you need to defend yourself, um, which was I feel like the meta like seven months ago, and people have slowly been getting around that and learning more about layered defense again. Uh, no faction in the game smashes through a passive like just hide okay. hide your women defense. Uh, yeah, access. yeah, like top of C tier feels very appropriate, right? Because at the end of the day. You can build a limited insertion list that has like fourteen orders to spend with More. your it's, five. They, they have. They can get so. They can. They can put so there's, many orders through a link. Yeah, team. there's so there's so much tackle where you have like good NCO as well. Like crit crit is a fantastic NCO model. Yep. Like you even Be, have like and Bishio, you just, yeah, yeah, you just walk into someone's DZ, right? Like if they don't, if they have decided I'm not going to, you know, fight you in deployment. You can just walk into a DZ if they're not ready for it, like you an can, Ariadna, like it's like an underprepared Ariadna player. Yep, you you can theoretically get. I think you can actually get sixteen orders through that link if you push it, but usually it's more like fourteen, and that's a lot. Yeah, and you also have like good solo ARO pieces as well, like a like the Neurosynetix Yano anyone like burst two missile launcher on ARO duty. Even a a hack tower is very expensive, and it's going to be difficult. Frankly, it's going to be difficult to afford a a missile launcher hack tower out of vanilla Yucheng. I don't really think you can in ISS because mm. Kuang Shi kind you of mean, enable it. Uh, IA. Uh, sorry, no, no. I, I, oh, sorry. Vanilla, vanilla can afford a hack tower. Yeah, Invincible Army. If Invincibles take a hack tower, it has to be an active piece. Um, yeah. Although the missile launcher hack tower can sometimes be an active piece in a surprisingly aggressive way. Um, you just just neg twelve someone, and you're like, I'm just gonna roll the fourteen, and you can you can just miss. Um, yeah, good luck, man. But, Wishing you the best of luck. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, yeah, top of top of C tier, just because there are, at the end of the day, they are an all heavy infantry faction yeah. sitting top, behind ten bots. Yeah. Top of C tier feels very appropriate because it wouldn't surprise me at all, right? If I go on like the IGL Discord and someone's like, yeah, I had like a Five, three round tournament today. I played IA. I didn't run into a single hacker all day, and I killed everything on the table. Yep. Yep. I won top of turn one every single game. Yeah, isn't that fun? Yep. Um, God, God knows I have had events where I'm like, and so I won the lieutenant roll for the fifth time in <laughs> fifth time in a row, and the game was very straightforward because I had a plan for that. Um, yeah, but but if you like, if you. I I just I don't think invincibles have if you're if you run into a good defense that layers hacking just you know hacking ablative elements hard aros that like don't just you don't just get to shoot straight to death with a well with like a... what do they what do they have to deal with Moran's on rooftops 
yeah, uh, they have ten bots minus six and 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 hope, and that's about it. Yeah, because like because ev- right, even in like your best case scenario where you're like, I'm a ten bot minus six walking underneath a Moran on a rooftop, it's still what like in a vanilla no man's list, that's what like two to three hacks coming at you. Yeah, it's not enough. like like one of those is like gonna get through, and then you're gonna have to take a save. And it's gonna start. Yeah, it starts breaking up the link just a little too quickly. Yeah, you start well, having a bad time very quickly. <laughs> So that puts us through Yuching and into Ariadna with vanilla Ariadna up first. Uh, bottom A. No, actually. I oh man, vanilla, vanilla strong... Ariadna is so good. Do you think vanilla Ariadna or Cosmofort is better? I think vanilla Ariadna is better. Interesting. Okay, I, we, we're going to have some words about that then. Likely. All right. Well, let's let's put both of those. So Cosmoflot, because th- that is it is those two. Those two are the best of Ariadna, yeah, and there's I a think lot is, of overlap between them. Yeah, I think it is Vanilla Ariadna, Cosmoflot, and then Tack in like third, probably. Yeah, Tack and, bit tack of and Scots. Third. Tack and Scots are both okay. I would put Scots above Tariyami Core actually, but it's very oh, close. Yeah. Okay. Scots are kind of forgotten, but there's a lot that you can trade on. Okay, well, let's talk about these two first, and then we'll compare the Sounds others. Good. Um, I th- they are closer than they've ever been. Uh, the for me, Vanilla Ariadna would previously kind of always have been a little bit above because I think Veronin is an excellent lieutenant. Bear Pods can't be linked in any case, and Bear Pods are, Bear Pods are fantastic. Vanilla Ariadna have a broader depth of like if you don't want to take two Bear Pods. Then almost all of the dog warriors, but especially the um, the devil dog, are excellent alternative rapid offensive units. And they have desperados, and desperados are like outstanding. You also get a- antipodes as well, and antipodes is good. Antipodes are a piece that I need to play with more so I can justify my dislike of them. Uh, and the thing about antipodes is that they are they are far far too easy to make good decisions against. Um, I feel like people screw up against them like far too much, but you just get to all, like there. If you always know if antipodes are acting, and so you always get to declare discover rolls against them for free because yep. there's no gun under there. There's no yes. Like if if a camouflage marker in vanilla Ariadna walks up the field, you have to think about like it's probably an SAS, but even if it's an SAS, do I want to let it like forward observe or flash pulse me for free? If it crosses yeah. a gap, um, you don't get to be completely free in your AROs. But against antipodes, you just always get to discover. Always. Every time. Which means that their camouflage is often broken by the time that they make contact, which means they get shot to bits on the way in. Yeah. Um, not They're not bad, because the whole pack costs like 24 points, including the controller. But, yeah. Well, yeah um, and you also have a smoke grenade launcher on her, too. Yeah, if you use that, you break camouflage on every antipode. Yeah, but you know, I look. I've it's it. Look, I've played against it. It's fine, but like, it's still it's a thing you can do that opens up options. Yep, yep. And if the antipodes are dead, etc. Um. So yeah, the reason why the reason why I think it's so before I would have said, look, the links in Cosmoflot are fine and good. Um. It's not necessarily how I super play, but uh, there's nothing wrong with a Rokot plus Volkalak link. Um. Well, what that's has... what I think. That's what I think Cosmoflot get over Vanilla Ariadna is that they get that annoying ARO presence. They get what I think is the most annoying ARO presence in the game, which is a linked missile launcher that has more than one wound. And total immunity in this case, right? Yeah, that too. Um, so what has changed for me about Ariadna, about Cosmoflot actually, that puts them right next to Vanilla Ariadna is Patcher, uh, Patcher Varangian link teams. And because the Cosmoflot get nine point Varangians, which is actually perfectly yes. serviceable. Yes. And that shotgun patcher, it just by itself is good, but when you put it in a link team with smoke and plus one burst, that mm. thing is a burst four Vulcan shotgun. My my brother in Christ, may I share with you the glory that is a unknown ranger, a patcher, and a Varangian in a link together. I mean, I guess you could put the unknown ranger in. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yes. The unknown ranger should go in that Harry's team, probably. Yes, that is very good, because it adds a gun into that mix. Fuck, and wanna, MSV1. I wanna, I wanna and MIM. Now. Damn it, I want to play that now. MSV1, MIM, also is more than one, is another more than one more wound than one model wound. as well. Yeah. It's an and, AP Spitfire. Yeah, more close combat. Yep. Specialist, another specialist. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. 
I still think like they're right next to one another and personal preference as to which way you go. But just, just the fact that the patcher alone can like, there is nothing that I think I would get more, more joy out of than some like fucking Marut enjoyer or something with their tag. that's really <laughs> tough with its heavy flamethrower. So any close assault has to contend with the heavy flamethrower. And the patcher is like, all right, bitch, take the corner. What do you want to do? You want to flamethrower me? Cause I'm immune to that continuous effect. I will make one save. That's totally fine. You're going to have to cop eight, eight hits from this shotgun, which has either continuous damage or armor piercing. Make your choice. You stupid tag. And that, You're that, gonna brings, have a bad me, time. that brings me deep joy. Why is it always the Marot man? What did the Marot ever do to you? I can't smoke past it with any faction except Toha. It sucks. Oh man. I have to, it's a tag so... I actually have to fight. I dislike that. Man, I hate when I have to like play the game and interact with my opponent in yeah, game. I don't it's all do about playing the, the game and interacting with my opponent. I'll I'll interact with my opponent above the table. We'll have a conversation, but like I want to solve the puzzle <laughs> and win that way. Um Yes, really compelling, actually, is the Unknown Ranger in that little link, yeah. I, I think Cosmoflot is better than Vanilla, personally. That's that's definitely where I am sitting currently. All right, I'll, I'll change them. Um, I'll change them under protest, but you've, you've, you've got me thinking with that, uh, with that link team. I you think just, they are... You just look at Cosmo, you just look at the, like, Cosmoflot lists, right? Like, especially ones that I see out of the IGL as well. There's just no fat on those lists. Like everything in there has a like a like a defined purpose and is very good. Yeah, yeah, and that is the sign of a good faction. We haven't um, even talked about the Chernoborg either. That's like that's like how deep these factions are. Is that we haven't even talked about the Chernoborg. Yep. Well, the Chernoborg is sort of definitionally serviceable. It is just it is good. It's good. Yep. It's 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 a main battle tag for just below main battle tag price, and you give up the ability to make good AROs. Um, it's totally fine in my opinion. Uh, I used to think it was really busted, and now I think it's just good. I think it's fine. It's like I think it's really good. I think it's just another good tag. Yeah. Like it gives your opponent things to think about as well. Yep. And for a relatively limited cost, and neither of those factions really struggle with SWC, so Ooh. you just you just be like, yep, cool. I've I've got the points. I'll chuck it in there. I would just yeah. You you just you. I I've had the very unique enjoyment coming from factions like Aleph, where I've built. Cosmoflot list, and I'm like, I've got everything I want in this list, and I have like 50 points and like three swig left over. What do I do now? Yep. So let's let's move on to so those like I I think Ariadna is really going to have kind of two factions in, in every single every single lane because yes. we've got our our two B tier Ariadna factions are going to be um, uh, Tartary Army Corps and Caledonian Highlanders. And we can put both of them kind of just like up there next to each other. I think I'd put Caledonian slightly above Tartar Army Corps. They're very different, so we'll talk I, briefly about each. I but... have I have a question. Yep. I feel like potentially TAC might belong in the Toha zone. Okay, break that down. Okay, so I feel like TAC fall under the same sort of like umbrella as Toha in that if your opponent knows TAC, right? If you played if you played against Tack a bunch, you can look at a Tack deployment of fifteen camo mark or fourteen camo markers and like Veronin and go, that's a Strelok, that's a Strelok. Yeah. That is potentially Vasily Plashenko. That is a scout potentially. Uh I see okay, there's like this many camo markers, this many of them might be decoys, this many might be mines, it means there's also potentially a Spetsnaz coming. If you don't know any of that, you are looking at a deployment of 14 camera markers and maybe Veronin, and you're going, what the fuck is this? I'll I'll actually go one better. No, like I, I agree with that. Um I so if you take someone who played N3 for a fair bit and you present them with that, uh there are there are old reflexes in terms of how to deal with that kind of an army. And it's just to face check it. It's to just when your opponent has so that kind of camouflage defense is really good and it's really cool. And the blank courtesy list meme, um, the the you get nothing good day sir meme, is very very good. But yes, it's it is strongest when you stall into it and you treat like if you if you approach Tartary Army Corps, like every camouflage marker could be concealing a helot equivalent threat, you will lose the game. Yes, they they will oh, yeah. because. Yeah, there are very few to no Halot equivalent threats in Tartary Army Corps. Yeah, there's there's like a tank hunter missile launcher potentially, 
and you know which one of the mark which of the markers can be the tank hunter. And if you if you into Tartary Army Corps, you just face check it and you say, No, no, I'm running at you. I'm gonna I'm gonna find something to fight, even if it's Veronin in the back of your deployment zone, you reveal your shit to stop me. It's I find it it's relatively straightforward to play into. But in N three, in N four rather, where sixteen camouflage marker lists are almost unknown, you have the same like what's a ligma kind of effect. Where yeah, that's like, that's literally it's literally it. It's, it's people because because I can speak from the position of boy howdy have I played more games into attack than I think almost any other faction in the game. Yep, yep. and like that yep. progression absolutely exists. Yep. Okay. Yep. So we'll put we'll put tack up in the Toha zone. Um, Caledonians are probably a B tier faction. Um, they don't yeah, have it. They have they have a lot of like things that are missing, but they also just have a ton of value. Um, basically, like Caledonia, Scots Guards are a little mediocre. But if you oh, look at high level grades. Dude, I'm not even looking. I'm not even looking at like Scots Guard when I'm like looking at Caledonia. I'm looking at a Harris team of the T2 rifle Mormare, like Isabel McGregor, and like some guy. And I'm going deal with this. My um my go to for Caledonia is like uh unlinked William Wallace and a bunch of yep. dog warriors who he then coordinates for free up the board every turn. Yep. Multiple SAS and and you get some like you get like a lot of this is just doing stuff that you could do with um frankly that you could do with uh bu- 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 um Cosmoflot. Realistically, it's it's what you could do with Cosmoflot, but a little bit worse. Because a Cameronian versus a Bear Pode. Actually, you know what, for the points cost, very like a Cameronian is a lot cheaper than a Bear Pode, and you can have more Cameronians. You you can't have three tank equivalent Silhouette six murder murder machines in Tartaria in um, Cosmoflot. You can, but you get McMurrow. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, so so Cosmoflot. Oh sure, sorry, best, sorry, I had the wrong way. If around. you if you take Wallace in Cosmoflot, being like, I'm going to coordinate these absolute killing machines forward. You're like one bear pod, second bear pod. Uh, I don't know something else. Um, but in Caledonia, you're like, no, I've got three of these things. Let's go. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty We're just sure. going to run them at you. I'm gonna have to check this now. There is there is an availability limit shared across Dog Warriors in Caledonia, but it is it is ah uh, oh, you can only have two. God damn it! Ah. <laughs> so it's still gonna be this is so. There cannot be more than two. Oh no, no, sorry. There cannot be no, more than two have the Dog hand Warrior light troops except for personalities. So yeah. you can have this is you want to hear something really dumb? Cameronians in. Uh, Scots are AVA three, but you are only allowed two of them. Yay! But you can take two and and McMurrah. Um, sure, that's fine. So, God, I'm looking at army right now. It says, I uh, know oh the AVA of Cameronians totally or partially replaces the availability of dog warriors. It cannot be more than two dog warrior like troops in a general army. Wow, this is some Spanglish. I'm oh just going God. to assume that you can take. You know what? The, There's the, some weird. There's some weird thing as well where like a dog warrior on its own is considered different to a guy with a handler with a, a dude with a handler as well. I remember that was a whole thing for a while too. I'm not gonna interrogate this too hard, but if I put three Cameronians, McMurrah, and Wallace into a link, uh it te- into a list, it tells me that's legal. So I'm just going to assume that it is. We we tr- in the app we trust. Um so and that is something like for twi- that's it's really worth noting that a a thirty two point bear pod costs twelve points more than a Cameronian, and doesn't necessarily perform like sixty percent more than a Cameronian does. Yeah, and you can get like a lot of Cameronians, and you can get a lot of SAS, and you can fuel it all with six point volunteers, and there's there's some real strengths in a Caledonian list, but then you try you have to you have to gunfight with something. And Scots, basically, it's Highlander Greys. And Highlander Greys are hugely efficient pieces. 28 points for what you get on a Highlander Grey is HMGs. For, basically, all of the Highlander Grey profiles are very, very good. But it is very obvious very quickly that Caledonia Firepower tops out. It tops out 
relatively low. So you have to make that work. And also they are probably the hardest faction to collect because they're just not easy to proxy with anything. Just just give me the just give me the more man. Like you talk about those Highlander Greys, just give me the more man. I they're okay, look, I I I will speak highly of a Mormaya. But I will speak highly of many of its qualities, except for its like a competitive viability, because forty points for a dogger to dude is is a little bit much. But damage seventeen armor piercing is is pretty cool. Oh, I'm not I'm not looking at that one. What do you like the chain colt? T two? N- no, just give me the T two rifle. The T the damage fifteen AP T two rifle. Yeah. Okay. For thirty six points. Yep. Fair enough. You like I said, you put that. I don't know what the I don't know what the third member of the Harris is. It's just him, Isabel McGregor. And a guy. Uh, and then you're walking that up the board. Isabel McGregor lets you do a bunch of classifieds because she just is a hacker. You would put them in with one of the Highlander Greys with smoke grenades, which is all Highlander Greys. Yep, perfect then. Yep, 22, 20, that, 20, yep. 20 point T2 warding shotgun or 28 point HMJ. Yep, you walk that up the table. It can kill a tag. Like, it will just kill a tag. Fair enough. Um, where would you put it in terms of? I think it probably is still a good B tier faction. I yeah, I think I think it's a I think it is a I think it falls into the category of like a stat check faction where if you don't have a way to deal with these TI models, you're just they're just going to run over you. But the second you're playing into like hackers alarm and it's like, why does every model that I'm facing right now have a viral weapon of some description? And uh, I would like to offer a draw, my friend. <laughs> Yeah. All right. And then we have what are probably the C tier factions for Ariadna, um, which are US Ariadna and French Smurgavingians. It's and... just US Ariadna and then French next to it, right? And yeah. then French are just going to move further and further down the longer we go. Um, I think genuinely the question is do, do either of these stray into the D tier? I think French is more likely to stray into the D tier because I don't think a faction that can link an unknown ranger could be a D tier faction. Yeah, yeah. And like, frankly, US Ariadna have Devil Dogs and Devil Dogs and Desperados and a linked unknown ranger. Um, and also, right at the end of grunts. the day, at the end of the day, people are going to if you take four grunts in a list, four infiltrating grunts, someone's going to lose to that. <laughs> may not be the first grunt, may not be the second grunt. Might not even be the third grunt, but that fourth grunt. <laughs> um, I I think U.S. So U.S. area, uh, um, I think it probably goes above ISS in terms of like it's almost potentially top of the C tier because where it's like where it's going to fail is just it's a very like you've got you've got good pieces. You the dog warriors are good, the desperados are good, and the unknown ranger is good, but then. From there on out, you're basically just playing with some variation of line infantry. And Blackjack. Uh, Blackjack Har- the Blackjack Harris is legit. Come on. Uh, okay. Maybe like okay, maybe. Yep. But like, okay, BS thirteen, burst five, let's do our best with this, take one wound and like really start to suck. Um <laughs> it's it's that the faction the the top end of the faction is really low. Like even a even a sure. Blackjack Harris, you know, a core cool linked grunt. Those are not like super high quality elements, and sometimes they're just they're just not going to get you across the line. Um, yep. And but in terms of like a failure state, what will screw you going through a tournament? I think that's less likely to fail you than oh no, my opponent has a hacker, which is yeah. the failure state for uh, like the ISS. I, yeah, you know, IA. And, yeah. And IA. Yep. Also, we didn't even talk about him, Van Zant. Van Zandt is just going to be a problem for people. It's very, very every now and again, he will. He's a little so in US Ariadna, he is he's a bit like a bit like the Rassia in Morats, where it is easier to tell that he is there than in yes. than in vanilla. Yes, but he's still that's not even from being good. Like I had round one of CanCon, I just immediately called that Van Zandt was coming. Didn't stop him from being a pain in the ass. He was still super annoying when he appeared. Well, that's the thing as well. Also in my experience playing with like DZ parachutists now, I find that people tend to be very aware of it turn one and then turn two, they just start to forget about it and they'll start just moving models forward and gaps open up in a deployment. 
that's always the way. Every parachutist is like that, where you can defend against them early, but you just you th- the, the herd gets thin. You run out of resources. Yep. Um, for French Merigovingia, they are just in the unfortunate state where like the entire faction is understated. There is there's not a single model, even um, Equip Mirage Five, which are quite good, are very very expensive. I don't think there's a single model in French Merigovingia that you look at and you're like, that's a fucking bargain. That's something I can yes. hang my hat on. Yes, and unfortunately. That, I, don't know, they, I don't know, some, someone's going to be like, excuse you, sir, one time at locals, someone coordinated ordered with four metros and I died. I mean, there's like, there's metro panzerfausts. Um, it's nothing wrong with them. That's a totally, no. that's a totally serviceable profile. It's totally serviceable. It's uh, it, like, if you compare it to a Delami, it is worse at doing what the Delami does for, and it costs more points, but it's regular. Um, that's, it's like, but they're, so it, they're fine, but there's so much in the faction, like, frankly, huge swaths of French Merigovingia are just desperately Unplayable. in need of a glow up. Like, they're just not, they're just not, they're bad. They're bad profiles yeah. for that cost. Yeah. Oh, something I did want to say just about the first three we talked about. So Vanilla, Cosmo, and Tac. They have, I think, the best non-offensive warband in the game with Ermandinos. Those things are cracked. Yep. Yep. Super high utility. A warband, I mean, it's the only warband that's, spe- that's a specialist, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, you're not going to use it as, like, an attack piece, but just, it's just, it just is a classified machine. I mean, every every now and again, you will. That's the thing about yeah. the Amandino, is it's like, Fizz 14 smoke, Fizz 14 smoke, do something that is specialist related, and then, oh, I have a chain rifle and passable close combat. Well, time to suicide. Yep. Turn, turn around, salute the boys, and you're going in. Yep, yep, now's my time. All right. Yep. Uh, into Hack Islam. And we, <laughs> we should crack on, because huh, uh, this video is not going to be short. Um, Vanilla Hack Islam... It's fine, people will listen to this. Yep, I think Vanilla Hack Islam is a comfortable A faction. I, in fact, I think it's probably the best of the A factions that we've covered so far. I don't have crazy strong opinions about Hack Islam, because my games into them are pretty limited to a lot of into Rama, and like one game that I've got to play into Assassins. So I'm very happy to sort of... Uh, go to your experience on this yep. one. Uh, I like Vanilla Hack Islam because it can make Kylie Hassified a very unfun experience for your opponent. <laughs> so, um, I, well, I'll say this. I don't think Hack... So Vanilla Hack Islam are very, very good. Um, I think they are almost the, like, perfect case study in what makes a... what makes just a, an A faction, where they don't have everything and they can't do everything, but the weaknesses or the, the limitations that the faction has are part of its character and and don't, like, the strengths that it has more than compensate, more than compensate for the weaknesses. Yeah. Also, um, as just one other knock against them going into S tier, I don't think they can carry a player on their own to a good result with just yeah. the raw power level. You need to be... It, it, from what it feels like watching Hack Islam tick from the outside... It feels like you need to be very switched on as a player to get the most out of these bottles. Yeah, no, I, def- I would definitely agree. A, a good, a good hack Islam player is is terrifying, um, particularly since bikes got their post ITS season oh, thirteen oh, glow up. Oh um, yes, and and like the even the Zamira buff and like there's there are no faction has more good quality irregular pieces and like. Like the duos in Vanilla Hack Islam are excellent. Um, Hassassin yep. for days are a high watermark for what impersonators can do at a co- like at a discount cost. Um, Hack Islam links, Hack Islam lists, sorry, can just genuinely sing. But then you can also look at Hack Islam list and be like, ah, oh, the longest range gun is twenty four inches, and I don't have a plan yeah. for MSV apart from kill it with you know kill it with a uh with a hassassin for day but my plan is to kill it with a hassassin for day um yeah so you also your tags aren't the best either i don't know how do you feel about the shakush i think it is the most painfully average tag in the game yeah um i know it definitely is it's 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 a weird underperformer, but it the specific issue is um remember i just said oh look all my guns 24 inch range yeah, if you need a if you need a thirty two inch damage sixteen vanilla HMG to like just really fuck up a line infantry link, it'll do it. 
58 points is actually not the best deal for the, the thing about the Shakush is that um, if you are investing in a piece that expensive as a rampart sweeper, it has to be able to actually rampart sweep. And a Shakush doesn't actually necessarily do that. And it, particularly if you put it in comparison to an Azrael, an Azrael is less durable, not tack aware, and has lower ballistic skill. But if that gun hits you, it it, it, it might just kill anything in the entire game. Which oh, means yeah. that there are not actually that many pieces. If a risk-averse player looks at an Azrael compared to a Shakush, they might go like, I'll risk a face-to-face -face roll with a Shakush. But all it takes is for someone to have lost a Gator from full health to dead to like one <laughs> Azrael hit once to go like, no, I don't wanna I don't wanna fight that thing. I wanna yeah. you can you can have it. I would like to get off Mr. Bones' wild ride now. Yep. And and the Azrael is not a rampart sweeper, it's ballistic skill thirteen. It's very easy for it to fail, but that's the point of competition. It's yeah, the the tags in tags in Hak Islam, um, unlike say Dashat, where the the faction is so black and gold budget brand that you just take a tag because you can afford it. In yeah. Hack Islam, the faction is split between excellent discount pieces and excellent elite like mid level pieces. And yeah, so I feel like sometimes you'll list with those two. Yeah, I feel like sometimes Hack Islam is forced to rely on a tag because of the mission. Something like Frostbite, where you're like, well. I think it's only Frostbite. Frostbite is you the think it's only just Frostbite? Yeah, that is the only okay. mission where I would I would straight up go maybe like Biotech 4, where I would straight up go, oh, I'll take a Magariba guard for this. Yeah. Um I don't think in any other list I I, I will play the Magariba from time to time. It's it's okay. Um but it's not it's not a fit for the faction nearly as well. But yeah, definitely I think that three, of... that three sixty visor, man. <laughs> That's big, such a good piece of equipment. <laughs> mm. But there are, yeah, there are so many good pieces in Vanilla Hack Islam. And Vanilla Hack Islam does one of the things that I love in a list, which is that you mentioned before that Cosmofort lists can be like this, which is just zero fat. Um, and Starmada does this as well, actually, where you look at a list and you can see 15 troops top to tail, and every yep. single one of them is doing something important yep. and potentially also, like, would dangerous. You... Would you say the best irregulars in the game? Yeah, I think I did say the best irregulars in the game. Oh, okay. My bad. <laughs> I think I actually said that before, yes. Um, My bad, like, then. Yu, Yu Ching would be the closest competition, and, yep. and Hack Islam has... Hack Islam... Yu Ching has, like, four or five excellent irregulars. Hack Islam is like, just take your pick. Um, yeah. Even Matawia. Like, Matawia are excellent, and they were hugely nerfed. But all of the bikes, uh, Matawia, Dalami, Libertos, those things all exist in Hack Islam. Um, it's, they allow me to a lesser extent than Halots have the Halot thing of like, well, this could go really badly for me. I, uh, I, I'm pretty sure there was one video out there that listed Delami as as one of the most broken things in the game, which I assume was uh, attributed to personal experience. But the yeah. difference the difference between a Delami and a Halot is that a Halot will not run up the board and shotgun your deployment zone. Yeah, a Delami will do that um, if it if it wants to. So if no. you don't go to the Delami, the Delami will come to you. Yep. Um, next to Hakislam, we have Hassassins, uh, who are another very good faction. I would be tempted to put them somewhere like this. Okay, interesting. Have you played against Hassassins much? I've played one game against Assassins. What was your experience? Um, not good for my opponent. Mm -hmm. He was the one Assassin's player who didn't want to take a for day. That seems like, gonna, okay. Yep. I'm just going to let that sink in. Uh, and he tried to figure out how to solve the puzzle of a Suryat HRL. <laughs> okay. Yep. Without a for day. Yeah. All right. Um, and it didn't go well. And the game ended at the bottom of his first turn going first. All right. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Hass Hassassins are a little bit like Hackerslam, but uh, concentrated. So many of many of the strengths and weaknesses of Hackerslam are amplified in Hassassins, where you have to know what you're doing with them. But you have multiple Hassassin for days, multiple Asawira guard. And yeah. so I mentioned like, oh, look at that. All of my guns are range twenty-four. Yeah, that's going to be the experience with um, 
with with uh, Hassassins. Uh, Hassassin yeah. Barid are probably the best value for money hacker in the entire game. And well, they single handedly let you take a missile bot, right? Like yep. it's just there's so much value there for the for the points cost. You have you have well above line infantry hacking. You have hacking that comes within spitting distance of nomad quality. Um, in two profiles uh, for line infantry price tags. They're, they're exceptional. The limitation is you can only have two of them. And yep. so you're like one hacker, one killer hacker. It's thin. Uh, in Hassassins, you can link them. Um, it's, so there's just a lot of that. Like Hassassins have many of the strengths. The strengths, the strengths of vanilla that they are missing is that they don't have profile depth and they don't have... Vanilla can take an Azrael. Vanilla can take now. Vanilla can take bikers. They are broader, and that that breadth gives you options to do things that that Hassassins can't. Um, but the strengths of Hassassins are, are like the Hassassin. They have two Hassassin for days. You can take two for days yep. and Jabel if you want. Um, you have multiple Azrael. Uh, there's Azrael. something I think also to be said about the fact that you're a sectoral that doesn't rely on your links to be relevant. You. Yep. Kind of, you kind of get so much value out of having such good availability on such good premium pieces. Many, many of the best sectorals, many of, I mean, certainly many of the most interesting sectorals in the game are ones that trade on unique profiles and availability. And I think, I think Hassassins are one of those. Has, um, yeah. Very, very, very good in the right hands, and I feel comfortable putting them up in the A tier, but a little bit below Vanilla Hacker Slum. Just be careful of not running into the problem of I have five regular orders. Yes, I mean, you can even do like th there's depth even in like double double sunduk bot is probably a meme, but it is capable of winning tournaments. Um, and it is a lovely, lovely list. I I've had the experience of trying to dig a sunduk book out, and it was a pain. <laughs> what if what if helots cost fifty points but were worth fifty points? Yeah. Yep. 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 All right, Kapu oh. Kapu Kalki. Have you ever I didn't played know against... this. I didn't know this existed until I looked at assassins in the Infinity Army. <laughs> Um, I don't think we'll dwell on them at any great length. They they're better than Merigovingians, but they yeah. have many of the same problems as Merigovingians. Also, just so people don't think that I don't I've played Infinity for about a year, it'll just a bit over a year. I I didn't know they existed. <laughs> that's why that's that's why you're here, fresh eyes. See, I still think about things often in terms of N three. Like if when we were talking about Merigovingians, I do physically stop myself from talking about how N3 sixth sense chasseurs worked. Um, because they don't exist anymore and it would be pointless to discuss, but boy howdy, they were fucked. Um, but they aren't anymore. And there's yeah. very there's there's very few ways to effectively like get my eye to start twitching. <laughs> but it's it's N three players being like, Well, back in N three it worked like this and it was so much better then. It's in in N in N two a uh, camouflage oh was effectively God. ballistic skill attack berserk or something. I don't know. I didn't play. Um, oh God! Yep. Merigovingians, Merigovingians, and QK both have that. Like, there's a serious lack of power in the sectoral. It's QK has it better than Merigovingia does. Absolutely does. Um, they 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 they're somewhere between C and D tier, but uh, they're desperately in need of a glow up. Uh, space pirates. I I mean, they should be cool. Silk Road, you know, Silk Road, Barbary Corsair, um, Space Corsairs should be super sweet, but, uh, but. Suppose, yeah, <laughs> but but it's just it's just not quite there. Yeah, um, I'm going to turn to you for Rama Task Force because I've played it, I've played with and against it very little, but I feel like it's at least a little bit common in Victoria. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of Rama players actually. I played against it more times than I sort of figured I would. Uh, I think it is. Potentially between O twelve and UG and uh, White Banner really? is where okay. I sort of I like it a lot. Like I think there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do in Rama. I think it suffers from the fact that you are very very reliant on all of your really good light infantry. Yep, and you don't really have the option to sort of turn and go. Here is my big dickhead. Mm -hmm. But but the light the infantry end... is very good. But the light infantry are very good. And also at the end of the day, fuck is Aiden. Oh my god. <laughs> like, if if a model is putting a faction on its back, the Zayden is so good. But yep. I think it is a credit to Rama that I have seen lists without a Zayden that have still been a task to sort of unpick and fight. 
I so how do you how do you find I would have put Rama probably like somewhere mid to low Bs or high Cs because I previously thought about them as like they they struggle to defend. How do you find attacking into Rama? Interesting. So a lot of my experience into Rama has been in sort of weird like weird games. Like a lot of I played against a lot of Magariba guards. Yep. A lot of Magariba guards. Which actually presents a defensive option because you can defend you can you yeah. can take with a tag, right? Yeah, that model's hard that model's hard to deal with. Um I found the best way to deal with the Magariba guard is to just walk a Dadarazi up to it under smoke and yep. just start whacking it to death. <laughs> yep. That works better than you think it would. I, okay. I believe. Um you also have like really you you've got like weird defensive options as well. Like you need to find out how to you need to deal with a Zayden. And if you're a faction that doesn't have smoke You like, can just lose face to face with that thing and it has a missile lose, launcher. I've I've been at games at locals where I have been like playing my game and I have heard from across <laughs> the room the number of roles that have been lost against a Zayd and missile launcher. It is just a very miserable experience. I mean, if you if you do the math right, it's it's rolling identically to Atlanta, except that she has an MSV, but it has a missile launcher. Uh, yeah, exactly. Missile launchers. There is no there is no piece of in, there is no piece in Infinity that I fear fighting more than a linked missile launcher. Yeah, no, fair enough. Okay. Put me up against literally anything in the game, and I can generally, I can generally take a face to face and feel confident. Put me up against a link missile launcher, and I'm just sitting there staring at like my four dice on a Yagat, yep. being like, "Come on, Papa needs a new pair of shoes on this one." Yep. No. Okay. Fair enough. Yep. All right. Uh, uh, somewhere between O12 and and White Banner. Awesome. Yeah. Also, there's something to be said for Hack Islam as well, in that they have, in a season that is defined by Attack and Murder's bot, they have the best Attack and Murder's bot. Yes. Yep. The the Rafik. At 14 points, cheaper than every other forward observer remote, with a light shotgun for its troubles, is a wonderful piece. And then you have the Red Fury option as well. Ah, oh, man. Red Fury. What a shit gun. <laughs> Great gun. Just... Fantastic <laughs> weapon. No, uh, man. Oh, God. Not the fantastic not weapon if you, just, if you just need your opponent to make guts rolls and go prone. Exactly. Not necessarily uh, the best at killing things. All well, right. Unless it's, stapled, unless it's stapled onto a chef skin. <laughs> Okay, yeah. For, for my sanity, we're going to crack on through the rest. We're getting, I think we're well over halfway there now, which is good, because I'm getting tired. Nomads. Um, now, this is, Nomads, just before we talk about this one, Nomads are a faction that, Vanilla Nomads in particular, where there is a definite perception that Nomads are like a designer favorite, and are very, very good, and etc. But you look at their actual average performance, and they're not often first place tournament placements, or even particularly I would high. Act, yeah, I would actually argue that Vanilla Nomads is not S tier. Oh, no, I don't think so either. Um, oh, thank and God. That's, that's what I'm... I, 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 I think I would put Vanilla Nomads really? probably I, something I, like that. No, I'd have them top of A. Oh, no, I, I wouldn't put them above. I would not put them above Hack Islam. Interesting. Okay. Um, uh, okay, look. I I'm, think the fact, I'm I'm being the fact that here. you have a main battle tag that is just that good. The fact, that the, the fact that the Nomad list, right? Like, the list for Nomads. I think if you put the list for Nomads against Vanilla Hack Islam, I'd, be, I'd personally be a bit frightened as the Hack Islam player of the fact no. that I'm staring at either a Zali or a Gator. Not even remotely. No, I'll take really? I'll, I'll, okay. I'll back Hack Islam in that matchup every day of the week. Um, okay. And let me, let me explain why. Um, nomads are Vanilla Nomads, uh, are an excellent faction. They are a definite A faction, and they're a definite A faction in the same way that Hack Islam is a definite A faction, where there are some clear vulnerabilities that, like, there are some there are some clear issues with nomads that are a weakness that it is good that it exists because it helps define the faction. And um, and despite what you'll sometimes sort of, if you go onto the forums and stuff and you read about them, etc., you wouldn't necessarily <laughs> think about this. The Mr. Bots are broken. Um, because it's because nomads can do everything. Um, yeah, nomads the, even the, have a lieutenant the, with plus one order now for their NCO. Uh, the demonologist the, is not a good profile. Do not forums, take it. The forums have told me that nomads are broken and vin and the uh, missile bots are the most broken thing in the game. So the 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 difference between nomads and vanilla hack Islam is that vanilla hack Islam, their their factional weakness is that they they lack some capabilities. They've got no way to 
uh, just blitz through. They have no Eclipse, they have no White Noise, they have no Hacking Device Plus, and their best HMG is BS-13 on a heavy mach- on, a, on a heavy infantry profile. Yes. Nomad Weakness is not a capability weakness. Nomads have, for practical purposes, every capability in the game. They have every kind of hacking, they have every kind of gun, they have a HRMC tag, they have an NCO tag, they have smoke, they have eclipse, they have what nomads actually have everything. Everything. Literally everything. Um which is why they're often perceived as I guess technically you could argue a good lieutenant, right? Uh, no, I love. I, there are multiple. There, I, I love uh, interventors and I love okay. moderators as LT profiles. I think both of those are great. Okay. Um, what nomads have is they are desperately vulnerable to being precision unpicked. Um, any one casualty can massively diminish the effect of a nomad force. Um, if you, if and just as a case study, if you take a nomad force that is um, a salamander, two moderators. Uh, a Salamander or a Gator, two moderators, uh, two Nassai Morans, Jazz, Billy, uh, some other hacker, uh, uh, a, a, um, a Vertigo Zons. Uh, how, does this sound familiar? Like every Nomad list, right? I'm describing right now. I feel like and, Nomad suffers Nomad suffers as well from the list existing and that everyone sort of knows what the list has um, in it. And and you, you take that list and, and you just say, look, I'm just going to, before the game begins, I let you kill one piece. Um... The no- that, that can just unpick the entire nomad list. If you just kill the Vertigo Zond, then the Morans and the Hackers are suddenly hugely less useful. If you kill... They, they have no, they have nothing to get them through loss of lieutenant turn, because nomad lists usually run enough irregular pieces that they can't spare command tokens to just push through LOL. Yeah. That if you can scalpel the LT, they're in huge trouble. Um, if you... Like, this, this, if you kill a Puppet Master... Uh, if you just get a kill on the Puppet Master and the Puppets turn off, then they've just lost, like, 40 points, probably. Yeah. To a single win model dying. And so, Nomads... Um, I, I love Nomads as a faction, but they are a faction that is... They're a faction that... I mean, I'm not even, not, not even sure how to put this, but they're a faction that is going to be worse off against good players than okay. than any other faction. Because if you Would... can, if you exploit an opening against Nomads, it hurts more than like almost any other faction. Would you argue that Nomads is a faction of higher highs than Hackers Lump, but the lows are a lot lower? Um Would you agree with that? No, I, I um I, I I don't think I would, but only because it's a different kind of conversation where okay. nomads have capability, um, but they can be a little a little like they they're it's easier to find openings that are like if you if against a hack Islam player, you find an opening and score a kill. Then even if it's Saladin, there's a pretty good chance that the Hack Islam player has a good way of playing through that. Like there's, there's just a lot more redundancy. Right. That yeah. Exists. Nomads. Nomads. It's incredibly rare. It's incredibly rare for a nomad list to have genuine redundancy. Even to the point where it's not uncommon. If you if you'd like if you asked Chat GPT to write you a nomad list, it, I would not be surprised if it was like it had Jazz as the only hacker, <laughs> and then yep. so you you kill Jazz and you're like there's yep. there's so much potential vulnerability in nomads but what they get in exchange for that is literally fucking everything um so they're Before very commandos very like uh, yep, fair enough yeah. fair enough um i, I yeah I, i'm i'm going to put i'm i'm going to make the strong argument that they're just behind hackerslam only because as both a hackerslam and a nomad player in the match between those two factions, I feel like Hacker's Lime is favoured. But interesting. Vanilla Nomad's still very, very good. All right. Absolutely. Let's, let's go through the sectorals. Um, Corregidor. I so just to speak about the sectoral, sectorals overall, I would say it goes Bakun and Corregidor. Oh, Bakun and Tunguska Corregidor probably. I don't know about you. I'd say Bakun and Corregidor, Corregidor Tunguska. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Whereabouts? I you? think Bakun. Where would, would, would you put Bakun? Man, I don't know. They're so they seem so good now after the update. Yeah, honestly, around there you could maybe like play around with them and assassins, maybe. Because um... they're because they have because they still have all the stuff that they had previously, right? Mm-hmm. They didn't really lose anything. You can still like dump a fucking riot girl on the table and go here, you go, bud. So 
the the Bakunin update is actually my favorite update that they've done to a sectoral in N4 because it didn't take anything away from the faction and it didn't increase the faction's power it just increased increased its breadth um yeah because all all of the observant stuff if i'm being perfectly blunt in absolute terms it's probably less powerful than the stuff that already existed in Bakunin not by a lot it's still good but i have been playing i think we have like two and a half Bakunin players locally, and they are relatively, like, they'll play a fair bit. I have played a lot of games against Bakunin, and playing into the nuns is... You have Completely to be able different to... different from playing into the Riot Girls? Yeah, you have to be able to deal with the, the, with this freaking Mimitism 6 on everything, but if you can deal with that, those pieces aren't actually particularly tough. Whereas Riot Girls are just, like, one, very hard to kill, and two... Missile launcher. Well, it's it's I think maybe the best linked ML in the game because it has MSV one staple to it and an extra wound. Yeah, and the Riot Girl link as well is probably the best forced reconstitution link of like the fact that the Riot Girl link is pure and has a premium engineer and a premium doctor in it. Um, is is like excellent. Well, yeah, the fact that unless someone unless. There are very few guns in the game that are going to take a Riot Girl out in a, in one shot. Yep. And yep. then Avicenna's sitting behind him like, come on, buddy, you're getting back up. Yep. And that Link is mobile enough as well that it can go around. Like, yeah. Even if you run that as a Harris, I really like it. Um, I would put Corregidor further down, but probably still an A-tier faction. Really? Okay. Because I haven't played into Corregidor almost at all, so this is sort of outside of my area. Um, so, how do I put this? They used to be the Link faction, where there were okay. so many Links that you could build, and they were all really, really good. And then the fire team update happened. And now, mm. if you do that same stuff with Corregidor, you are trading a lot for just, like, plus one ballistic skill, plus one burst on an okay piece. Okay. Sure. But if you look at the bones of Corregidor, they still have... Oh, and also they have one SWC, Alguacile Lieutenants, as really the only, like, Lieutenant choice, apart from a Brigada. They have crap Lieutenants. Oh, um, yeah, that's but fun. they still have Morans. They have Morans, Jazz and Billy, a Vertigo Zone, and a Gator. Um, and they have McMurrah. So, okay. in... Hey, like, why like, does I, every faction get McMurrah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were the first, they, to be fair. Uh, but I feel like Corregidor have fallen a long way. In fact, I think probably... if I'm going to put them below 012. I think actually it's somewhere like that. I think that looks... To, to my sort of overarching eye of factions, I think that maybe looks a little better. Yeah. I don't know. I'm looking at Bakunin right now. I think... Could they go above Assassins? I don't know. You're Assassin. You, uh, it's you're, very you're close. Um, th this, this... So, Bakunin and Hassassins is a lot like the Nomads Hack Islam, like, in terms of... Sure. But I think... Yeah, I think you can make that argument, yeah, that Bakunin is just I think, very, I very think slightly. That, I think that Bakunin having as many good link options as it does is so big. The fact that Bakunin... So, it's a rare strength for a sectoral that you can sit down before a game begins and not actually know 100% what you'll be playing into. Um, yep. The fact that Bakunin huge. might be doing one of a few very different things is rare for a sectoral, and that's good. Um, the fact you can build a Bakunin list that doesn't include Uberfall Commandos and you still feel really good about the list is yep. horrifying to me. Um, no, no, so that's that's fair. I think, yeah, I think they're uh, Hassassins are still a broad faction, but every Hassassin list, so you can write two very different Hassassin lists, but they'll still kind of do a lot of the same things, whereas two different Bakuna lists will be very different. Yep, I like that a lot. Um, Corregidor these days, I think, is just uh, if you are willing to give up a lot of stuff from Vanilla Nomads in exchange for McMurra and some okay link teams. Then that's Corregidor. But the the things that you 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 retain many of the weaknesses of Vanilla Nomads in terms of the the vulnerability to precision strikes, and what you gain from me, I don't think makes up for it. Particularly when you have to deal with like Corregidor are Nomads with one less SWC, and I have not seen a Nomad list, a Vanilla Nomad list, with less than five point five SWC spent in a long time. So yeah, Vanilla Nomads. Are 
one of the most swick hungry factions in yeah, the game. Yeah, we so we have one local player who is playing like dedicated asymmetric lists, and he's still usually using five point five to six SWC. That's um, so crazy. And me. so if you take vanilla nomads and you cut one SWC out of the list, they struggle. I'd almost maybe. Oh man. The more we talk about Corregidor, the more I like want them to keep just sort of slipping down. But I think no, because the strengths are like they're still a faction with yeah. Jazz, Morans, Gator, Miss Halbot, yeah, no, um, yeah. Jaguars. Like they they can't fall that far. No, but I think they are a yeah. B faction. Yep, no B B sounds correct. Yep. Uh, Tunguska is the Pano of Nomads. <laughs> yes, and I think as a result, we'll put them just below Pano. Absolutely. Uh, I- in my experience with a mate who played a lot of Tunguska, you are nomads with good guns, but you pay for it something wicked. Yeah, I agree. Um, I we have a we have a so Rob, a local player, not not me, other Rob in in yep. Canberra has been playing quite a lot of Tunguska over the last year, and he has since he's had some very good like showings and performances with it. I respect the faction, but it's definitely it feels like it's that bottom of a B tier. Right, bottom of a B. T- it's it's above a C tier faction because the strengths are strong, but there's just in any given event your odds of hitting something that scuppers you is just yep. a little bit too high. Um, yep. Another best... faction that got hurt by the link update too because Grenz is no longer yep. got to be 19s yep. for free. I, I mean, you compare right. You look at the B tier and you compare Rama and Tunguska. What is the difference? Because Tunguska has a broader like broader set of capabilities than Rama, but Rama has pure core linked Zayadin. And Tunguska yep. has non-pure core linked Grenzers. And I think that's sort of like, that's a large part of it. Yep. Um, no, I, I agree with everything you're saying. Yep. Def- definitely, like, the faction has enough strengths. And again, B- B-tier is a faction that you can take to an event and win with. Um, you just, you're just kind of hoping to dodge certain things from happening. And Tunguska, like, definitely fits there, where they have some strengths that are very strong. But, yeah, it's, it's just, there are... The odds of running into something that is hard for them to deal with, a little bit high. The best, um, just to talk very briefly about it, the best results that I've seen out of Tunguska are actually focusing on the fact that it has uh, a very good engineer and a lot of engineerable things. It's a a faction that if you lean into force reconstitution, you can overcome some of its disadvantages. Um, so that's something to think Hector, about. Hector was doing well. quite well with no, with Tunguska for a bit, in the way that Hector does, where you look at his list and go, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Why is it winning? But it keeps winning. It keeps winning, yeah. All right, so oh, this boy. is an interesting one. Where would you yeah. put Vanilla Combined Army? I mean, I'm probably just going to sound like the crowd, but I'd still probably put it in S tier, because I think it is the first faction we have come across where you can still be entirely carried by your faction to a very good result, just based on how good the pieces are. I actually don't think... I, I was... So, I, to, to peer behind the curtain slightly, I have been thinking about this for, like, three days. Because we, we, we spoke about doing this um, this sit-down. Like, last week. Last week. And I, I have basically spent a week thinking about whether or not Combined Army is actually an S tier. And I've been going and I've been writing lists and they they don't like they just don't quite feel like they are anymore. Um, really? Okay. Yeah, like they're they're very very good, but with in compa- for me it's that point of comparison where I I played them at Novacore, and then mm-hmm. like almost immediately I and, and like the for those who um, Novacore was I think the it was certainly the biggest event run in Australia that year, and Novacore historically for the two years that it's run has been the biggest Australian event next to CanCon. And at the last Nova Corps, before the before it ended as a series, first place and second place were, were combined army. Um, and if I think about those lists, that the the list that took first and the list that took second, uh, wildly different, wildly different. Um, those between like those, the the first player lists were kind of like one was avatar, avatar list, avatar list with some variations, and then I was playing in second place, the what has become the like disgusting anathematic uh, Cheronted list. Um, and then a, like a, a Raicho, etc. list. And those are all still really, really good. But what elevated those lists to S tier was 
the unfair there were like just there were just a few pieces in there a few too many pieces that were like unfair levels of good where the efficiency the combination of Dadarazi and Tega creatures was too efficient and the avatar was too strong and I if I write an avatar like I was, I was sitting there I spent like the last week like writing an avatar lists and trying to reconstitute like what what a, what a modern version of my Nova Core list would look like and I think the my my anathematic Chironted list. I was about to ask, how many points has it gone up? Uh, a lot, <laughs> um, because really? the net rods went up two points, and the tag yep. creatures went up um, one point each. Two, two points, I think. It's seven points now for a DA, uh, one or yeah. two points each, and they've gotten worse. The tag creatures are worse as well, um, and it's not easy to just carve six points out of a list and deal like you you know you turn the tag creatures into gakis. And the bulk of the rest of the list still works. It is, it is of all of the factions we've talked about, I think it is the closest to S tier. Um, I, I just... And I think it's probably the best faction. I think it's probably the best faction in the game. But I don't think it's quite as idiot-proof as it was. I think it's fallen just enough down now that not, I, not I can quite. imagine <laughs> playing that list into ALF, Hackerslam, Nomads even Bakunin to an extent, and losing. Yes. Yes. Um, I can... I I don't know. I, I still think to an extent you can hand a new player, a newer player, and like, a avatar list, and they're still going to win a number of games. If you put... So here's new, the like distinction. Two... I think that's a really good point. Let me jump in real quick. Here's the distinction. Sure. I think, I think a year and a half ago, you could hand a, a relatively inexperienced player an avatar list, and they have a reasonable chance of winning five out of five games. Like, just at, not not talking at like at a, at a tournament, but if you just say, "Hey, buddy, go and play five games at a local club," an avatar list a year and a half ago could win five out of five games with a new player. Go play five games and then get kicked out of said local club for playing an avatar for five games. I think the exact same avatar list would win four out of five games because the avatar has has lost just enough. But it's an excellent but high risk piece. I I think winning four out of five games. Oh, it's really is really enough. good. Yeah, is but an, for, it's for, still for, enough to put it into S tier. No, for me that's the difference between like if you, you you hand you hand an okay player like an okay player a list and you say go and play this and yeah I I just I think I think the fact that the the avatar it's lost enough. Um, almost all of the combined army has lost enough. The anathematic Chironted list is probably the highest watermark now. It it suffered the least, and it still suffered. Um, this is this is a point of contention. I think I think you could easily. I, any individual player is going to make the argument that that combined army sits between one of these two. Oh look, we're probably going to have another argument when we talk about it. So it's like this is fine. Uh, I've got a firm opinion on Aleph actually, but um, but yeah, I I'm I'm because I'm the one controlling the, <laughs> controlling the display. Exactly. In this case. You're, you're you're controlling the display, um, man. I am I am essentially ba- I am essentially just for, the, a voice talking in your head. Yep. Um I think I think at this time in this place, you th- other like little it's little contextual things as well where they have one of the worst remotes to benefit from Takemodos because it's just more expensive yes. and doesn't fit into their lists easily. Um, so they don't they, they have not benefited from either of the last two seasonal updates. They didn't benefit mm. from Takamotos and they didn't benefit from motorcycle updates really particularly. Um, do you think do you think any other army in the game fits a missile bot in as easily as combined army does? Yeah, Hackerslam and Nomads both fit a missile bot in more easily. Really? Okay, interesting. Nomads because they have to, and Hackerslam because Bereeds enable them to. Sure. Yeah. Whereas in in um, combined army, the so if you think about like Hackerslam takes two Hassassin Bereeds for thirty two points, combined army takes Bitkiss and a Dartok for forty two points, and those are and it's that's classic combined army stuff where like those are excellent pieces and they're probably better cyber bullies than the Hassassin Bereed is by a small margin. But, but you don't need to be a good cyber bully to spotlight something effectively. Well, no, but the diff, the diff, that's I disagree because the difference between whip thirteen and whip fourteen when you're making single dice rolls really mm. matters, and so you have to splay into the whip sixteen hackers in in combined army, and at that point you're like, yes, yeah, snap in the snap in the missile bot, but by that point you're paying forty two plus seventy something plus um 
it becomes a lot less casual and it becomes a lot more like, I better get some use out of these pitches and missile bots. And by the by, the pitches are ballistic skill 11, not 12, although you have three of them rather than two of them. Um, yeah. Very, Look, very the, good faction. A lot, of, a lot of people will go on about how Bit will always manage to lob a pitcher 32 inches into someone's deployment zone. It doesn't work like that. Please stop saying it. If you yeah. build a good table, that won't happen. Absolutely does not. I um, I remember. So actually, the the I just need to get Liverpool. up on a soapbox for a second there. Sorry. Say again. I just need to get up on a soapbox for a second there oh, about yeah. that. Um, I I so I mean I played bit and kiss uh, as on the back of a cyber warfare list for five rounds at Novacore, and the there is some freaking hair raising, um, hair raising moments trying to land pitches and failing. And taking long bomb pitcher shocks shops shots is a is a mugs game. Um, there is no easier way to lose a game to bad luck than to have your plan be to just long bomb, uh, long bomb a pitcher with a BS eleven model. Um, yeah. Even if you even if you've got a reload caddy ready yeah. to go. Look, if it's a, if it's literally a free pitcher and it doesn't matter on the outcome of the game, yeah, cool. If it lands, it lands. But like, if that's part of your plan to how you're going to win the game, it's a bad plan. Yeah. Um. So this is probably the first point of significant disagreement. Um, and if anyone's watching this, please feel free to put in the comments uh, for the purposes of YouTube algorithmic engagement, whether you think combined oh. army should have been ranked S tier. God, I love that. I love the algorithm. Um, I'm going to hand this next one completely over to you. Uh, more oh, at aggression God. force. I personally think more at aggression force is either between assassins and shock army, or it is a between assassins and Bakunin. So, something like that? Oh, Assassins and Shock Army. Yeah, Assassins and Shock Army, or it's above Assassins between Shock Army and Bakunin. Ooh, yeah, okay. Ah, oh, that's a really difficult one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's yep. somewhere around there. Um, it's somewhere around there. I feel like into certain styles of Bakunin, you step on their throat. Like, if they're playing, if they're playing a five-man nun call, you go, okay, cool, here's a Yao Gat. I'm going to throw some smoke in front of this Yao Gat. Good luck. And just take a better face-to-face -face roll than they have, yep. Exactly. Uh, you also have... You're also... Oh. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, I think Morats are really, really, really good. Uh, I have really enjoyed playing them and learning how to play them. They have a lot of weaknesses as a faction. You don't have good... Infiltrators, you have the Zeryat, and I don't think the Zeryat is particularly good personally. Mm -hmm. uh, you have incredible, you have some of the maybe the best warbands in the game, uh, and you are the faction who gets to build the core links that everyone got to play before the fire team update, <laughs> but they're yep. all pure still. Uh, you also have, I think, one of the most obnoxious pieces of ARO in the game in the form of the Zeryat. The Soya HRL yep. is immaculate. It's it's a missile launcher in orbit being a missile launcher, and continuous damage is sometimes more frightening than explosive. Yeah. I I'm gonna agree with that, Reed. I I think in the comparison between Bakunin and Morats, I, I think these two being next to each other is exactly correct. Um, because they are incredibly closely balanced in terms of power. I think the high what, what the reason why I'm probably going to agree with putting Bakunin slightly ahead is that the the heights of of what Morats can accomplish, um, the the like the most polished Morat list is probably a little bit ahead of the most polished Bakunin list, mostly off the back of Kornak. You're going to have kind of, yep. kind of like like lots of capabilities, lots of different things, lots of really cool yep. stuff going on, and lots of orders, which Bakunin doesn't have. But Bakunin post-Fire Team update can go in different directions. And because... I was literally about to say that. <laughs> that that versatility that Bakunin has, where you cannot sit down against Bakunin and know what you're going to be facing. Um, whereas against Morats, you can have a plan. You can have a plan at deployment. Um, even down to things like... Are there 15 visible troopers in the Morat list? We are now going to just take some time to defend against a Rassiat. There maybe there isn't one, but you're going to account for that. Like um, the the read uh, into Morat. I'm, is I'm easy. personally I'm personally of the opinion that uh, even if like 14 models in Morats is, is the correct number to play. 
Yep. It doesn't because it doesn't matter with Kornak. You it's you make up so many orders just for free. If you're playing Kornak, hell, if you've even managed to fit the Surgat HMG into the list as well, it just doesn't matter. Like you're having almost you have more than fifteen orders at that point. Yep. It's the it's just such a free fake out. Like even if you're not running a Raziat, the fact that you put it in their mind that this guy might be running one of the not swick Raziat options, and it can just walk into my DZ and still kill everything yep. if I'm not careful. Play more rats as fourteen troopers. No, I'll I'll pay that. I should do that at some point actually. It's it's a very it's a very like free experience. You get to live rent free in a lot of people's heads. Yep. I, and I I like that. I like I like doing that as a as a as a phenomenon. All right. So next up, uh, second last of the uh, second last of the combined army sectorals, we have Shazvastii. Oh boy. I think this might be a Toha zone sectoral. Really? Okay. Um, this is cool. I because I I know very little about Shaz other than your links are essentially limited to like Cheskin dragging two dickheads around. Yeah, that's essentially it. Um, one of our local Nomad players has been just beginning to think about dabbling into Chazvastii, and I had to very gently like take their list away from them, remove all of the <laughs> links pieces, and then hand it back. <laughs> um, that it, poor man! <laughs> you ruined all of his fun. Where he's he like, wanted, hey, was, were there what? were there Nox in that list or a Guilos? Uh, they were both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, was, and, I, and, and like it was like, what do you think I should cut? I'm leaning towards one of the speculos, and it's like, no, you will cut. You will cut both M drones, the Gualio, and every linked piece that isn't Sheshkin. <laughs> oh, God. this is this is the way that you do it, and then we will flex. Um, the thing about the thing about Shazvastii is that they have that like wildly difficult to quantify power, where it is just so I, I've settled on. Um, I think the right. I think you should always take two speculos, but the right speculo loadout is the Peter Henry standard, which is one mine layer, one shotgun, because the shotgun is better in a vacuum, but the mine layer just is fucked. Um, and if your opponent knows how to deal with you, and in particular knows how to, and is capable... Like, not every list can defend against two speculos. No. Some lists are just like, oh no, I'll die. Like a, a Svalerheimer list that... Morats that... is a Morats is an army that struggles into, yep. like, speculo, day type models deploying outside your DZ. You... If I'm playing against, you know, Shaz, or like, um, uh, Hack Islam... There's a legitimate argument that my reserves are like the Osnat and the Hungry Harris. Yeah. Being like, yep. well, I'm going to try and counter deploy this yeah, really hard. And if you think about like Svalheimer, for example, like if you think about a Svalheimer double Yotam list, where now in full, the, I'm going to put Shazvastiai in the bottom of the Toha zone. Yep. Because Sounds good to me. They are, their power is often wildly contingent on how well their opponent knows their bullshit. But they are also, of all of the Toha zone armies so far, most susceptible to just getting randomly fucked by bad luck. And nothing nothing uh, captures that better than your opponent just rolling two saves against a monofilament that crit. Like, oh, the Yotam has rolled a 13 and a 15. Get fucked, I guess. Um, Svalerheimer can be... Sorry, uh, Shazvastii can be very failure intolerant. Um, where just like some things go wrong, and in particular, there's nothing that has Vasti I hate more than just being like my opponent made like six saves. Crap. Yep. Um, in a sense, so like in at the last round of CanCon this last year, like I I think it was horribly unfair to Peter playing Shaz that he had to play Luke. into Toha in the last round because there's just nothing worse for Shaz Vasti. Well, you mean Luke? <laughs> Oh, was it Luke Henry? Sorry. Yeah, Peter was on uh, Steel Phalanx. Fucking damn it. I apologize to both brothers for getting their names wrong. They're both incredibly lovely, and they sit in my head as a unit. Um, as just they like... are. I've got... I've, fucking Luke and I have been working... Have been, like, mapping some uh, Morat stuff. I'm like, fun. I like this. <sighs> they're, they're the best, those two. Um, they're, they are the core... Like, there's, like, half a dozen Melbourne people in particular that led to Melbourne getting their reputation as just, like, the best dudes to hang out with. Um, sorry, Luke Henry. I should know that. Um, I think it was horribly unfair on Luke that he had to play into fucking Toha in the last round of CanCon, because there's no matchup there that's worse, where it's like, what does Shazvastii hate? They just hate it when your opponent makes saves. What did Toha yeah. do? Oh, 
Free symbiote. Here is your well, yeah, what yeah, what a Toha do. Here is your state issued friend. Yep. Um but with with that said, some like some of the stuff that Shaz Vastii can do, and this is this is why they fit in that zone, where they just they they can sway wildly between feeling desperately unfair and feeling like fragile. Where if you play just like a normal you're just like you're just like a pan oceanian dude and you've turned up with your light infantry link and your tag <laughs> And and you're you're here to have a good time and win some ballistic skill rolls. And some Shaz player deploys a uh, a mine on top of your link, so that three things will be hit if anyone AROs and uh, walks a monofilament into your dragao and kills it. And you're like, and there is yeah, and there is also a sphinx. <laughs> and and so and you just you just like I don't understand how this is possibly fair or balanced. And then you have the same game. And two out of three of the irregulars dodge, and the Dragao makes its save and burns the Speculator to death. Um, so yep. they, Shazvastii can vary wildly, but I think that's why they're going to go up in that spot there, because putting them in a specific tier is just like, no, it's going to... I think there are, I think there are very few armies or units that you could show a new player and make them less likely to want to play Infinity than like a Specular Killer. <laughs> a Specular like Killer Mind Layer, like the yeah. Sphinx, maybe, yep. as well. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> uh, I, an invincible army, sixteen order pain train running across the board and killing you on the first turn might be worse. Um, yeah. But but yes, like if if you had to pick one model to do not expose a new player to this profile until they've played a dozen games, it's probably the speculo killer mind layer. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> All right. Um, Onyx contact force. Uh, I don't know. Bottom of B, like somewhere in C, maybe. Uh, they I feel like they're above. They're above a B tier, but they're they're right next to Tunguska for almost the exact same reasons. Basically, they're they're alien yeah. Tunguska. Yeah, I don't I don't have any like strong feelings whatsoever about Onyx, and that should say something since they're a combined sectorial that everyone has strong feelings about. Yeah, yep. Um, they have some very good things going for them, but yeah. Uh, I, in fact, I I will I will agree with you. I I am. Onyx win the prize, or Sectoral, I am most likely to mistakenly assume, has a profile it doesn't have. Um, you could, like, I had to remind myself for a second that Onyx do have a do have a Sphinx, but don't have a Raichu. Um, if, you ask, if you ask me to, like, identify which units in vanilla come from Onyx, I would not be able to tell you. Uh, it's actually the other way around. Um, Onyx, Onyx draws lots of different units from vanilla because it oh, is okay. kind of like a, it's a representation of all of the species. Um, oh. the only things that Onyx added to combined army, um, are the Nexus operatives. So the, the actual members of the, uh, subspecies. Yep. And then it was the first time we saw the Toha race traders, the Sigma Trihedron. Okay, cool. So the the fictional backstory for my entire Toha army come was that came out with Onyx Contact Force, um, but yeah, and those are not high like the the actual the Fractor, the Macreep Tracker, and the Nexus are not, and the Umbra, and this like they're not particularly high impact additions to yeah uh, to combined. All right, it's time. <laughs> Alef. I, I personally think that they are a faction which is one of the most forgiving in the game to a new player fucking up and making bad decisions and still yep. somehow being able to carry themselves to a win. I would argue that it is so strong to the extent that I would almost put them in S tier for how forgiving they are as a faction. And in how much of a amount of build diversity you have going from a very sort of beginner place with... Aleph, where you start on, like, here is a Marut and 12 guys to support a Marut, to, like... Through oh, into the whole, the whole Greek panoply. The Greek, yeah, the whole Greek panoply that ends up being this, like, weird, like, mid-range list that has very few guns, but I believe still that somehow wins called games. called Mid-Rangers, and it, that, that name was coined by its creator. Uh, yeah, but that guy sucks, so... <laughs> Jordan has left the call. Um... <laughs> I I respect the according argument to, at putting them up according to Valor. Team. I reject my father. I reject my father. <laughs> um, I I I feel pretty much that this is about where they should go. Um, and my my rationale. I think they're a very good 
a faction. They have multiple viable builds along a spectrum with powerful pieces and a few small limitations in in those lists and in those builds. Um, I think there is almost no faction that is better at propping up someone who is still learning the game off the off the back of like sheer individual trooper quality. Like frankly post like post humans. Um but like there's a ton of stuff in Aleph where the profiles well, are just you know, good I mean po- post humans have been post humans have been taken down a couple of notch. I feel like there is some power that you can add back to post humans to <laughs> where you would bring them up to a much more fair and balanced place, you know? I'm not having this conversation. Uh, <laughs> we had this conversation after uh after Are you Andrew sure? Cup and I'm, I'm Are you not... sure I cannot I sure I cannot convince you to give the Mark IV heavy rocket launcher neurosynthetics? How many points does neurosynthetics cost? I don't know, but it'd just be really funny. It would be fun. I, I actually, I actually would would be just about willing to. I would hate it. I would hate it, but I could be persuaded that that is something that could exist. You um, could also give the Mark II hidden deployment back, and it'd be fine. No, absolutely fucking not. What? Not in any, not in any, not not in this lifetime or the next. <laughs> if um, anyone can't tell, I am absolutely talking shit out uh, of my ass here. I don't believe any of that stuff. This is this is there. there you have you have. I have shown weakness in a prior conversation, and you, you are choosing to ruthlessly exploit that while we are on air. Um, yep. The... I'm a terrible person. You made it, but you are the one that invited me on here. You I knew did. exactly I knew what, what you were going to get. Um, the, so for, for Aleph, for me, there are, there are a lot of profiles in the, in the, sect- in the faction sorry, that, can, that are just good enough to carry a game sometimes. As much as I whinge about the Marut, I think the Marut is good and fairly costed and has weaknesses. Um, I don't think, yeah, it's it's definitely something that can win you a game on its back. There are yep. models in Aleph that can unfairly win you a game off their back. Um, I I actually don't, th- I, 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 I dispute unfairly because at the points cost that most of them rack in at, it can feel like, so for example, Atlanta. If your yeah, opponent, that's, that's that's what I was right? that's what I was aiming towards. If your opponent face checks Atlanta and loses every face to face roll, that feels unfair. But she's really expensive, and if you look at yes. if you look at her average performance compared to that, it it like she's forty something points more. Uh, she's forty for the hidden deployment, forty four for the TR. Yeah, and forty four points for a model that dies to a Libertos is mm-hmm. like. The, the 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 top end and bottom end of her performance reflects that points cost. She she varies wildly. She like if I could find Atlanta's uh, list icon, we could put Atlanta in the Toha zone. But um, she is she is absolutely she has a giant stamp on her head that just says results may vary. Yeah. Um. And but if you look at other like other ALF um other ALF profiles as well, where. The Marut is a very expensive, often, typically speaking, it's a lieutenant main battle tag um, that you might not take chain of command with. And I'm speaking. I've as been a... coming. I've been coming around more on not taking chain of command in vanilla Aleph, just because of how well you play through a turn of loss of lieutenant with net rods. Yep. Um, but it is it is an oblivion susceptible lieutenant that you might not be going first with. Um, and like Penthesilia, for example, Penthesilia is a results may vary. But she's excellent. She's really good. She combines a whole lot of different things that she can do. And sometimes she has to... She's a submachine gun, right? Yeah, submachine gun, nanopulsor, plus one burst. Yeah. Um, sometimes she gets caught in a situation where she's got a pop gun firing at ranges that she can't possibly engage at. Uh, and that sucks for her. But then other times she's exceptional. And like even Hippolyta, right? Hippolyta is 40 points worth of just absolute, absolute missile tier character um she's 40 points and i think alf is full of those kind of pieces where in in any other faction you'd look at that and you'd be like oh that's a really nice luxury piece that's a like yeah i can find points for i can find points like starmata uh we were talking about about o12 brother yes. where you're like <laughs> o12 players should find find points for for hippolyta and as a starmata as an o12 player you go like yeah i can just about fit hippolyta and then you play her in a game and she does nothing one game, and then she just pops off the next. Um, and Aleph is a faction comprised entirely of those pieces that you somehow have to fit. But if you do, in any given game, one of them might carry you. I will say, list building three Greeks, 
it's surprisingly easy to fit a lot into th- I've sent you some of like my mm. new lists for that, and it's like I've comfortably fit Uteros, Hippolyta, Machion, and Atlanta into a list that is, I think, 14 or 15 orders. Yep, and that's got Eclipse Smoke, Close Range, and just about enough gunfighting, but it's still, like, there's limitations there. Um, I think I think Aleph is really, really good. I think it's a very good faction for going 4-1 four and, four and one at a 5-round event. Yes. I think it is a faction that is as difficult as anything else to go 5-zip five and, five and zip with. Oh, absolutely. Uh, um, also... Uh, for every aspiring Aleph player out there, play Achilles V2. Don't play Achilles V1. Please don't <laughs> listen to your friends that tell you Achilles V1 is the way to go. It's not. Damage 15 AP Spitfire is absolutely the way to go. Um, but very learn very how to fashion. use learn how to use impetuous troops, please. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm running out of screen space here. What have we got next? We have that's Phalanx, Ooh. right? Yeah, still Phalanx. Okay. Where do you think Phalanx should go? Oh man, I think they're so fucking good. Yeah, I like that. There's I like, like that. this this whole zone of the screen is the like really fucking good sectoral zone, steel, basically. Steel fail steel phalanx more than almost any other sectoral in the game. You sit down across from them, your opponent looks you dead in the eyes and goes, Hello, sir. <laughs> Do you have an answer to Phoenix? <laughs> yep. I don't If you don't have an answer to Phoenix, good luck. You know? Can I just say, just to call back briefly, um, Jordan and I have had a number of conversations around the general quality of the Red Fury as a weapon. Um, <laughs> I, I like Red Fury. I think I think a Red Fury is often a really useful like back pocket gun. It's burst four. It often only costs half an SWC. But you never feel the limitations of a Red Fury more than when a Mukta is fighting Phoenix. Yep. And you're like, pew, 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 And you hit him like five times across three face-to-face rolls. And he like, pass, 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 takes a wound. And your opponent looks you dead in the eye and stays standing. And you're like, yep. I'm going to lose a face-to-face roll soon. I can't keep winning these. And when I lose a face-to-face roll, I'm going to blow up. I mean, yeah, I'm just dead. It's it's horrifying. Um, like, And also the fact that Steel Phalanx has such a breadth of builds as well in terms of just like the number of things you can do with that faction is huge. I feel like you're often, I feel like Steel Phalanx is a faction that does the same thing, but a lot of different ways. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not exactly. Not exactly. But like the, the, it's it's how many character Myrmidons do you want to like shove into a link? Yeah. And how many character Myrmidons do we cut to do something like include a Gima missile launchers. Like yeah, how, yeah. How many character Myrmidons are we cutting to include one to to, to include two Gima missile launchers or uh, or extra Moy or whatever you know, etc. Yeah. Um, very yeah, very good sectoral. The there are limit like there are obvious limit like you just have a look at Phalanx and be like, there are obvious limitations in Phalanx. Like once you start what getting happens- into Thoraki- the Thorakidi links, and it's like yeah. this is what- just okay. What happens when my opponent has an MSV2 gun that is good? Um, good enough to actually... I mean, there's not a lot of... What what weapon... No, the, the, the Yaogat, for example. The Yaogat... Yeah, the multi-sniper. Probably, yeah. Probably kills Phoenix. Um, like a multi-sniper. You you just, like... You just look at them dead in the eyes and you go, DA. Yep. Call Link to Kamal. Yep. We'll do it, etc. Um, Ahu... Yeah, Kahu will. Kahu because Kah- Kahu's have Mim as well, don't they? Yeah, so Phoenix yeah. is on elevens. Kahu's on elevens. <laughs> it's, it's it's closer than it looks. That's actually a bit of a because the the it's, Kahu is very yeah. rarely benefiting from pure, pure Bolts. bonuses. Hmm? Bolts. Yep, Bolt MSV sniper etc. Phoenix is on fourteens. The Bolt. If it's... Uh, oh, the most susceptible faction in the game to guided as well. Is it? Yeah, you drop a, you just drop it now. You just drop the old pitcher next to him. I mean, like, I'll, I'll definitely concede that any link that involves Ajax can be brought down a peg by hacking. But yeah, most of the most of the characters in Aleph can can risk a reset if they really have to. Or dodge, yeah. on, dodge on thirteens versus. But like, it's you... a yeah, but it's a faction you don't. Steel Phalanx is a faction where I don't care if I spend my first turn. Killing like two members, like two of the two named characters yeah, out of yeah, the yeah. Myrmidon yeah. link. No, that's fair. Actually, the um, the 
I've I've made the point in the past that you can often consider a turn against Guided successful if you only take two casualties. But in yep. Phalanx, if those two casualties are McKeon and Phoenix, you're fucked. Yep. Uh, also, you on Toha, I remember you talking about at CanCon where you were playing Steel Phalanx, you looked at your opponent and said, do I do this the boring way where I sit in a corner and I spend 10 orders end gaming you? And yep. your opponent's like, yes, I do. Yep. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Um, very good faction, definitely belongs in the A tier. Uh, OSS. My baby. I love OSS to bits, but I think they're... Ne- I think they are on either side of Shock Army. Yeah, I, w- I, w- I would agree with that. I think I think they're going to fall just... I think they're probably just a little bit next... They're, they're on the to the right of Shock. Yep. Uh, a lot of this, a lot of similar features to Shock Army, actually. You have a fantastic calling that is incredibly reasonably costed. Uh, your calling guns are both very cheap in 21 and 5 points, I think, mm-hmm. for the sniper and the HMG. Yep. You only play one Swick for your HMG as well. Uh, they have MIM 3. As soon as you give them marksmanship, you're hitting on 17s a lot of the time, and that is just fucking brutal to deal with. Yep. Uh, and also, you can lose a face-to-face roll, because you are a remote presence model. Yep, and, being able to and... actually repair... I've had I've had some definite games with operations where you score some wins on the first turn, and the Dakini go unconscious, and it took your whole turn to do that, and then the bastards get back up again. Yep, they just stand right back up. Your opponent looks at you and goes, "Do you want to do that again?" Yep, yep. And you're, I, 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 I can't. I spent my Libertos killing you the first time. It's you dead have, now. You have, a, you have like a fantastic. You have one of the best lieutenants in the game in the Asurus. It's pricey as hell, but, but it's, it's it, it pays for it. Yeah, it does work. It, it is a hacker that can walk into an enemy repeater net and pick off enemy hackers one by one, just taking trinities and not caring. I will say, in terms of operations, you could pretty much go back to whatever I said this time last year, and it will probably all still be true, because yep. it's not a faction that's moved uh, across any of the League changes. I don't think the Takamoto's update was particularly relevant to it. The Bikes update wasn't particularly relevant to it. Like, there uh, were things uh, that you would use. Bikes it's got is bikes, just because right? you, you, yeah, yeah, you generally are playing at least one motorized bounty hunter. No, that's fair enough, yes, as the only, as the only option. Yep. Um... Yeah. I will say, in terms of like things that are bad about OSS, uh, you have no real good uh, CC options. Andromeda, I think, is a bit of a trap, personally. These days, yes. Um, I would pay a lot of money. I would do a lot of terrible things. I would commit a number of war crimes to swap Andromeda for Hippolyta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There would be. There are very few things I probably wouldn't do if I could do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's actually, uh, that's probably the biggest difference in terms of what has happened to OSS is that, and the, the, it's interesting actually that uh, it used, I, I remember having games against OSS where the whole game, the whole first turn was just around whether or not you got rooted by Andromeda. And yep. that's just not a thing anymore. She's she's fantastic still as a bully piece, but she's just not good for defending against like an enemy CC. At risking people. risking a like risking a twelve to infiltrate her. Yep. Is just you just don't do that. It's just not for a piece that's as expensive as she is. Yeah. Just yeah. Just as a faction, you're incredibly susceptible to like a good CC model just walking into your DZ and just going, "Well, I'm gonna kill everything." There's that. There's that bloody um. In terms of like all of the pieces in the game that you don't want a specula killer to just walk into, and then you ha- you fail your monofilament roll, it's like the Asura is one of them. Yep. Oh yes. Um, that is a horrifying proposition. But I think dis- uh, despite the Asura nerf, the bones of operations are so good that they stay. You mean the Andromeda the nerf? Sorry, yeah. Despite the Andromeda yeah. nerf, it's it's late. Uh, We've been talking for two and a half yeah, hours. Yeah, I know. I I would like some OSS updates. I would like some other link teams. I'd like Yadu to be changed to maybe be a bit better because yep. I feel like OSS list building becomes a little one dimensional after a point in time. I do feel like there's kind of one OSS list. There is. I tried doing some other stuff, like I was playing some weird har- harises where I had like a Rudra Pavadi and a and a uh, and a Yadu, and it was cool. I don't. I don't think it was better than just paying eighty six points and getting a Dakini mark- sniper with marksmanship. Yeah. I've um like I've I've done some stuff. Uh, I didn't. I don't think I actually played games. I've written some lists that were like two Dakini Haris teams and a Marut that you were trying to like really trade on an engineer, but. 
Um, yeah. The Marut's home, realistically, is in vanilla, and the core Dakini link is good enough that you, you know, etc., etc., etc. Yep. And you've got all you've got all the. It doesn't matter. You're playing all these rem models because you have proxies. The Mark One engineer is phenomenal. <laughs> yep. Yep. So I th I feel like putting yep just just underneath Shock Army, just above Cosmo Float. That feels pretty solid. Yep, I like that. Um. Okay. Uh. And here's some whiplash. Uh, Druze. I. Uh, I don't know much about Drews. I know grenade, haha, ha, grenade launcher, go bloop bloop, is pretty much um, what I, I know about Drews. I think I th I don't actually remember where we put them where we put them last year. Uh, I, I feel like is good. it might have been it might have been bottom of C, top of D, or even middle of C. If it was bottom of D, I think it is definitely time. Uh, Time to take the D out of Drews. Um, I think they're. I think they are a, a C tier. I think they are still a C tier faction. Uh, they're better than Mo. Yes, I think they are better than Mo. Um, because they're like, genuine. So at the end of the, the day, the, like Mo still have like a tick belang that has an AP HMG. Yeah, and Drews have pure link team diggers. Yeah, um, sure. And and Scarface and. Uh, actual hacking and peacemakers. Drews have the same availability peacemaker as Mo. Um, <laughs> Jesus and Christ. Uh, Des uh, Drews don't have desperados, but they do have yarn yarns. Look um, at me! I am the pano sectoral now. Uh, what? What? So what? Drews? Okay. Um, I don't think Drews escape C tier, although they're probably better than they've ever been. But but what Drews do have to deal with is. Drews and brawlers themselves are still overcosted profiles. Uh, they're they're like, hey, you know, we looted the armory for a whole bunch of shite that we don't need, and we're ballistic skill twelve. But um, in and around that, Drews increasingly have like they are they are the last X fire EM and normal grenade launcher. Uh, it's genuinely unique now, and yeah. they have Fiddler, and they have I'm going to say Mc, no, not McMurray, sorry. They have and they have um, Scarface and Cordelia, who are linkable, and they have Diggers, and there's just all of this like it's it's just increasingly it increasingly feels like it's kind of added up, kind of okay. Although the Bulleteer nerf did kind of flog them a little bit. They didn't like that very much. Yeah, Bulleteers, Bulleteers. Definitely kind of copped a bat for a reason. Um, but if if you compare Drews and if you compare Drews and military orders, um, military orders will have stuff going on that's like, that's cool, and that's cool, and that's an eleven model list, and okay. Whereas Drews will always comfortably hit a good order count. It's gonna be pretty yep. common to see like sixteen, sixteen or seventeen order Drews lists that are doing good things. They have Engineers, doctors, specialists, a tag, a tag that I'm more comfortable taking than the Seraph, although less than them. The military orders tick blank is exceptional, but it exists in a faction that like just doesn't have an easy way to get. Um... It's also unfortunately religious. Yeah, like there are availability to Fugazi drone bots in Druze, uh, just in term and diggers in Druze. And if if you have to take like if if military orders are taking cruisers for orders, and Druze are taking diggers and multiple AVA Fugazi, like that's not a competition. Uh kind of astoundingly, the 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 backbone of Druze is just very slightly more solid. Even if yeah, like Druze themselves, you will take some in a list often, and they will they will serve some purposes, but they are still kind of too expensive. They um, will do some things, but they they are too expensive, but they are still doing something that is unique and potentially good. So, yep. yeah, I would I'm put them above. Happy, I'm happy to defer to you on this one. Yeah, above military orders. Okay, closing stretch. Akari Company. You mean JSA? That's JSA. Akari Company. <laughs> Akari Company literally has Akari Company written on the. Listen, badge. I I can't see it on the screen because I'm I put everything on maximum size in order for. Okay. Work. Sorry, JSA. It's late. Um, I'm not sure I... where I feel about JSA these days. What do you reckon? I think better than. Or uh, maybe better than Tunguska? I oh. like JSA a lot, but I've been listening to uh, Josh Groth telling me about how good JSA are for a while. So I think there is a chance that I might have been uh, talked into the JSA copium, potentially. I have to <laughs> zoom out so that we've got space on the thing. Um, nope. So sell me on JSA. Uh, I think you're a faction that 
can produce a very, very cheap core link that still puts up a missile launcher, which is just... You don't really care what happens to it. Like, if it dies in two orders, it's still eight two orders from your opponent, and then you still have a bunch of other models in the list that in the core that have a hacker, a paramedic. At worst case scenario, you could start moving it off the table and it does some objectives, maybe, potentially. You've got tankos, and tankos are so good, dude. Tankos like, are I, very good. I, I don't think I need to sell anyone on how good tankos are, right? Like, it's a missile launcher, it's a flam and spear, like, you have these monofilament CC weapons, they have berserk as well, right? Light shotguns, yep. Yep, and you, you can, as a Haris, like, full order berserk, right? Like, that works? Uh, I don't actually remember. There's, I, I don't think it's on the list of skills that a Link team can declare, but there may have been rules changes around how it works. Worst I case scenario, you break it, and it's fine. Exactly. Uh, and then you've also got, like, a whole bunch of other, like, really good shit. Like, the Oyuri is so good as well, man. The Oyuri like, is probably the thing that people have kind of woken up on. I, I don't... I think the Oyuri... The biggest downside of it is that it's not... Like, Armor 7 and the lack of uh, explosive run in ARO does present some challenges. But I yeah. am willing to rank... I am willing to rate the Oyuri higher than I think I ever would have, if nothing else, off the back of stealth. So I've had... I've had... Like, as I said, I've got Josh chirping in one ear. I've had Ivory chirping in the other. I'm sitting there, I'm like, Lieutenant Oyuroi in group two with, like, five orders? It is only 75 points. Like, and then, you know, we're still, uh, like, that's just me talking about, like, some generic JSA stuff, right? Like, do I need to even say why your Jimbo is a good model? <laughs> nope, you do not need to say why your Jimbo is a good model. Your Jimbo do is I a need, very good model. Yeah, do I need to say why Oni Waban and Shinobi Kitsune are good models? Yeah. Um... Yeah. I th I think so. I think they belong in the B tier because they have strengths, but real like real weaknesses. Um, you don't need to look too far to look at JSA and be like, well, after that, oh, Yoroi, we are really short on guns. Yeah, I and, can start. I can start punching a lot of holes in this list. Um, early, the, fascinatingly, like at the very beginning, I'm going to talk very briefly. At the very beginning of N4, you'd have had people basically telling you that JSA were up here. Really? And it's specifically Crazy. because um, if you think about how people like learn games, uh, people like learn how to be aggressive first. And so everyone was coming out of, out of M3 um, where they just, the like aggro Ungabunga heavy infantry links hadn't existed and no one knew how to defend against them. And so like even samurai links just would run across the table and people would be like, I don't know what to do. Hey, yeah, that's crazy. The samurai just got to my deployment zone and, and then the tankos killed me. And <laughs> The samurai entered my deployment zone and then I died. I don't know what happened. Um, but these days, I think people... Like, it's a stealth... It is a stealth link. And so like that was like, they, they just stealth through. Like, we'll stop them from doing that. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Put up AROs that are watching the same space as your repeaters are occupying. Yeah, like um, Sixth Sense is a skill that exists. But uh, but I think dis despite the fact that as time has passed, we have learned how to deal with um, the like they just came and killed me uh, aspects of JSA. Yeah, no, I, I like I like them here because the strengths of JSA are strong enough that if you don't hit the person who knows how to deal with your shit, um, your shit is strong. Yeah, your shit is just really really obnoxious to deal with. Yeah, and and like. 17 points for Tanko, right? So Yeah, dude, um, it's so undercosted. Yeah, like any any it's three th and the, the, again we talk about military orders, like there's a lot of similarity between military orders have access to a mil an MO tick belang and actual guns. But if you look at the difference between military orders and JSA, JSA has nine point regulars that yep. can pad out the faction. And that lets Go. them do so many other things. Is a Keisatsu pretty? No. Is a Keisatsu missile launcher absolutely an ARO piece that is going to win you a game? It can. <laughs> um, the Kasatsu, I, I don't love Kasatsu. I think the, like, the, the discount that you get over equivalent line troops when you're giving up both ballistic skill and whip in exchange for courage and CC sucks, but they are still nine point troopers, so I ain't going to complain. Exactly. That's where I'm at. And also, like, the number of games you're just going to win off the back of I made my infiltration roll on Shinobu and some Oni Waban. Yep. Yep. Well, as a as a plan as a fallback plan, I think you could do like a a JSA like two lists. 
List one is Samurai and Oyuroi, and we're going to play this direct. And list two is... I'm not sure I can win that way, so we're taking three Onuwaban. <laughs> yeah, we're taking three... We are taking three Onuwaban, and one of these infiltration rolls is going to happen, yep. damn it. Yep. All right, Ikari Company. Uh, is, is Ikari... Am I wrong in assuming Ikari Company is just worse JSA? Yes. Okay. Um, I think they fit... So, Ikari Company... Uh, have the same availability tankos. Yep. Uh, and they can slot into link teams. Yep. And they have, I would say Scarface is, I don't actually, like Scarface versus the Oyuroi is very close in terms of like, which the I argument. think is better. He's cheaper. He's considerably cheaper. Yep. Um, And they have your Jimbo. And they have... AVA2 Desperados. And the Desperados are pretty good. They have diggers in addition to all of the rest of the bullshit. Although the diggers can't uh oh no look, the diggers are wild cards. How about that? Okay. Um and you can wow, actually build, we, sir. You can actually build a core link. I, I think the difference between the difference between JSA and um the biggest difference between JSA and Akari Company is apart from so Akari Company have smoke. They have multiple sources of smoke, but two Desperados should go in every every Akari Company list alongside Yojimbo. Yep. So immediately you have more smoke than JSA. But the other big difference is that JSA has its own Iwaban, and there's no answer to that in Akari Company. But JSA have either a Kasotsu or a Samurai Core, whereas Akari Company have a mixed Digger, Brawler, Druze, Reese team or like Kasotsu Tanko Digger Core. Like there are I think it's probably they come just behind this is really hard to gauge. Yeah. Because for a faction that is doing the things that these factions are doing, six point assault pieces with smoke to like ride shotgun with Yojimbo, that's really, really good. Well, uh, yeah, it's almost like having more Yojimbos. It kind of is, yeah. But the the core choices in Akari, the like core link team kind of elements, um, you cannot make a core of Druze. Like you look at the wild cards and you're like, oh, diggers count as Druze, so do brawlers. Can I make a core link? No, because uh, the brawlers, uh, brawlers and Dru the Druze, sorry, Druze, which they count as, are limited to Harris teams. Yeah. So you don't really. The closest you have to a core link that is a real core link that fights in Akari is five Wu Ming. And the 25 point Wu Ming profile and the 24, like the 25 point Wu Ming profile in particular, kind of fucks. Like it's armor four, BTS three, two wounds with a light shotgun and a Panzerfaust for 25 points. Like that's really, really good. But all your, there's no like Takaware or anything. You're getting a regular HMG. The whole link is probably something like heavy machine gun, Panzerfaust light shotgun, Panzerfaust light shotgun, boarding shotgun, tin bot, and then like one random forward observer, maybe to be a specialist. Yeah. And at 148 points, that is not doing what the Samurai that is, do. That is more expensive than my Morat core. Yeah. Um, and my Morat core has a tin bot, two sources of MSV. A multi sniper rifle plus one burst, yeah. an it, HRL, and a good hacker and a paramedic. It's definitely more expensive, uh, and your whole Morat link can't be Oblivion. Um, yes, it's definitely more expensive than a Samurai link, even if it does have a BS sixteen HMG. A BS sixteen HMG is really really good. Um, yes. I think actually, if we go back to JSA, the JSA core is often not going to be pure, is it? Where? Uh, unless it's like Keisotsu, I don't think so. No, so so Damaru and Tanko and Daiokai uh, don't share a type. There's no, like, samurai type. Yeah. But it's, it doesn't really matter because what you're doing with that list is you're just taking 17-point Tankos and 20-point Damarus and one Daiokai and you're just fucking running at your opponent. Well, it's a similar thing to what you've talked about with, like, the three Kaitok Harris, right? Yeah. It's you look at your opponent dead in the eye and you go this is your problem now yeah. yeah you could do you could do a jsa list that is two three model teams and it's just like the only thing holding that back is the av3 and the tanko 
<laughs> you're, you're having to go, oh, I guess I'll take the 20 point tomorrow, where's my, I suppose. Where's my AVA, where's my AVAT on uh, Tankos? For T for Tanko. 21, do you know sense. what? 21 point tomorrow are probably good enough, to be honest. Those things have yeah. Berserk, C24, EMC, Salus. That'll probably be fine. Almost certainly. Yeah, okay. I think... I, I would previously, like in a in a, a year ago, I would I think I almost certainly rated a curry company higher than JSA. But I wow. think I am persuaded that that has changed. And mostly off the back of the like weirdly, JSA made it through like I felt better about the I think I think at the time I did this review, which was just post the Fire Teams update, I thought better about the Akari company post Fire Teams update. That's such a it's such like a wild west time to be making a tier list as yep. well. Is immediately after this enormous update has like completely changed. I mean, you know, we had to one do of the best. core mechanics of the game. Yeah. Um. All right, Starco, free company of the star. Uh, I know very little about Starco. Um, I am definitely going to just very briefly refresh my memory. I think. I think. What are they? The what are they a of mixture the... of again? Uh, nomads, and. Nomads, <laughs> basically. Oh, okay. uh, nomads with a tiny little bit of Ariadna, basically, oh. and a little bit of Hack Islam, but mostly they're mostly they are a nomad faction. Sure. Um, they have basically no good tag, but they have linkable. They have linkable now. Uh, it's the only place you'll find Uhahu. Uh, Emily Handelman used to be incredible, and now she is merely okay. Um, because she used to be merely serviceable. Yeah, she used to be an X Visor EM LGL. Uh, and that could be core linked, and she doesn't get she doesn't get um, core link bonuses anymore because she's not she's not typed. Um, I think Starco has slipped down to probably just behind US Ariadna. Okay, interesting. I think I look at them today, and it was such a weird pile of things to look at. Yeah, like Riot Girls are good. Yes. Riot Girls are good. Um, ah, Riot Girls are good. But it's much more difficult to make Riot Girls... Like, Riot Girls in the shell of Starmata, of um, Starco, uh, like, they're being carried a lot more... They, they have to carry a lot more. They don't... Well, and yeah, they, they don't... need to pull a lot more weight. They can't just be, like, an ARO piece, right? Yeah. And, like, here's a terrible fucking injustice. Uh, Riot Girls with Avicenna in Bakunin core link composition bonuses. Riot Girls with Avicenna in Starco, not core link composition bonuses. That seems like a fucking oversight and a half. And that that hurts. Um, that, it, that significantly hurts, actually, because that ability to reconstitute that link team with a model that is c- contributing to the bonuses helps, is part of what makes Riot Girls really, really good. I, th- I feel like I put them next to US Ariadna they have Ermandinos rather than Desperados. They don't have Unknown Ranger, but they do have Riot Girls. They have Diggers. No, I, they're probably above US Ariadna. Okay. By a tiny margin. Call Links now, for, even if it's just for Harry's bonuses, is totally fine. Jaguars are good. It's a there's there's a you look at them you look at the things that they have, and there's plenty of stuff in there that's good, but it still manages to be kind of like a thin a thin sectoral. And you also have, for your trouble, you have the old Corredor, Corredor Alguacile Lieutenant problem, where if we oh. filter this by, like, filter by skills... As Lieutenant, yeah. Lieutenant, and your choices are a 16-point brawler, good luck taking a... De- like, so, 32 points with a decoy, have fun, um, or a Brigada, or an Alguacile, uh, with the, like, insult there that digger, the brawlers are whip 12. So if you want a decoy, you take a brawler and a second brawler for 32 points. Or 30 points now these days. Sorry, they're 15. That's... Or yep, you pay one that's... SWC. For those are some silly. options. Those are some options you've got there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh... I think I think top of the seat... Like, they've still got stuff. They've got hacking. They've got yeah. Riot Girls. A bit like Ariadna. There's some real... St- like US Ariadna. There's some strengths you can trade on. Like, all of these C-tier factions have strengths that you can trade on. But yep. the strengths begin to thin out and the weaknesses mount up the further down the tier you get, basically. Yep. No, that makes sense to me, honestly. All right. Spiral Core. I have a thought on this, but where would you put them? B tier. I, uh, I don't know where in B tier. Like, maybe, like, lower to mid B, probably, is where my 
mind immediately goes? I think they're either that or the bottom of the Toha zone. Bottom of the Toha zone's pretty interesting. If they fixed Tricor, then I feel like there's much more of a discussion to be had. Yeah, yep. Um, but as it stands now, it feels like you're a faction where you really, really just want someone to walk into your goddamn helots. That's kind of the gist. And, for, like, it's... It's... <sighs> On paper, combining Helots with Symbiomates should be one of the most fucked things in existence. And there was a time where that kind of was true. But they don't actually have pieces that they can put Symbiomates on that are that good. And so they're contingent on the Helots much more yeah. than Varuna are. Um, I... I think I think the time where Spiral Core, yeah, like if you if you don't understand what you're dealing with, because like you could say, oh, they're just like Varuna. They have uh, no. I think I think they belong here, and the reason why is that they have impersonators. There's weird shit, right? They have like Janstar. Yeah. Like if if you having... don't know what you're dealing with when a Grife operator or Janstar and Helots pop down, it can be really difficult to know what you're engaging. Because they can they can literally, they can do the Toha thing, right? Where you deploy Janstar, he's got two state-issued friends with him. Yep. And it's like, well, I sure hope you're not running a light infantry corps, my friend. Yep. But but again, this is, the, the Toha zone is the highly variable zone, because the other end of the Spiral Core experience is your opponent plays Morat. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, ah. Oh. So actually, it's really easy for you to discover, shoot my Helots to death. And uh, I can't erase or anything. Yeah, and that you... was my that was my experience in the game I played against Kirby. I ended up losing. Rescue sucks as a mission. Um, but yeah, it was it felt a lot like he had he was playing. His sniper was just pinging off of my Suryat. Yep. Yeah, because the, like... there's like the there's nothing wrong with the Tagma Schema viral sniper. It's a totally fine piece. It's a smoke shooting viral sniper. BS twelve burst three. It's, but it's totally fine, and I think I think for most players, the day has passed where like, oh, the war core is linked. That's weird. <laughs> I won't think about that too much. Like you don't find the players like that anymore, but you do still find some players. And I, I think that again, they're the bottom. They're the bottom of the Toha zone, where they are most likely to have that bad side of the variable performance, and less likely to have the like, what the fuck happened here. Archaeologists yeah. will sift through the records in, in, you know, sift through the ruins in in a hundred years and wonder. Yeah, it what doesn't. Jan it doesn't take did. a rock. Yeah, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at a bunch of Mim Zero camo markers and go, "Ooh, I mean, white rocket launches." It is really easy to fuck up engaging helots. Um, yes, but and and when you combine that with a faction that has potentially multiple impersonators, which can all do like I don't love Jan Star, but the high water mark for his performance, like Jan Star, is the epitome of the Toha zone, where yeah. if your opponent knows... How, like, he's a skill check for your opponent. If your opponent knows how to deal with Jan Star, then a command token and 40-something points worth of kit go down the toilet doing less damage than you need. If your opponent doesn't know how to deal with Jan Star, you win the game. Yep. Um, and and usually, you, you know, you'll if your fall tag, If your continue. tag is just looking at Jan Star, what's he going to do? Yep. Yep. I mean, he'll, you know, he'll spang the first hit. Maybe get to cover, you know, but oh, yeah. Anyway, um, bottom of the toe, and I think this is the last faction that we will see in the Toha zone oh, where they have that like sure. high variable performance that's really going to be dependent on player knowledge, um, scenario. Like they're also one of the things we didn't mention. Like uh, to the, I think it's Jermaine to discuss this actually. So Yuching are in the Toha zone where they have very variable performance because of um like scenarios they're contingent on scenarios yeah. being useful for them toha are actually in the same place where there are scenarios that toha just like do not want to play because they have to stretch their lists in really awkward and uncomfortable ways to reach and that's is worse it, for spiral is it just core. hacking bonuses is that what um that so you, you can or? you can play through it's mostly like uh not countermeasures but like highly classified for example oh um, okay whereas yeah, toha it's just like Ugh. now ariadna have some of the same issue, but like probably less. Like it's easier to get a hacker in Ariadna than Toha. It's easy. It's easy to just like like jam a war driver. It's like you can fit that square peg in that round hole. Yeah. 
but in Toha, where it's like, balance all of your triads and also... Uh, and Spiral are the same. Spiral can Spiral can just like if you have to play heavy, if you have to play um, bloody uh, Frostbite or highly classified. Like seeing seeing Ed write Spiral Core lists for highly classified was like really interesting. But also the man was being tortured. Yeah, poor guy. And and like he got he got he got lists out of it. They're like yeah, that can just about do it. But you're really starting to trade down on the faction strengths and then just be like, okay, cool. Yep, we've got that model cost 30. Like, you're starting to add in these like 30 point pieces to cover bases. Anyway, anyway. All right. Uh, foreign company. Oh, man, I like me some foreign company. Where would you put them? I mean, I, I inherently kind of want to put them. Well, I mean, they won. Uh, Adepticon. I'm not going to comment on what I believe to be the state of the US meta. Um, okay, well, the, no, so the, I, the, I US, the US the US meta is you know how many iPhone boxes do you need to make your table <laughs> I, uh, dense enough to play on? I haven't seen, so I I missed this. I I didn't see the list that won Adepticon. Do you know what it was? Uh, not off the top of my head. It was That's all right. yeah, it was it was like your it was a bolt core with like Valkyrie in it or whatever her name okay. is. She's really really good. Yep. Uh, you would. This is something you would need to just ask Trent for. Give me like two seconds. I'm gonna. One second. Okay, we've just found. We've just after after a minute off air, we have found the Adepticon foreign company lists. Um, I do not like this second one, but I do really like this first one, and I assume that there is good rationale that the um the person who wrote these had. Uh, what was their name? Um, Brunix, who won Adepticon with foreign company. Uh, this first list. Honestly, this first list is a reminder that this faction has a bolt core link with Valkyrie in it as a close assault option and Uberfell Commando. And you know what? Fair enough. Um, yeah, that's just going to do the job. And actually, shout out to this second this second combat group, which is Fagazi Dronbot, Peacemaker, two war correspondents, and a nine-point FTO mine layer beast hunter. That is, that is a fantastic, like... That combat beast hunter two, is sick. Well, no, that's that's the non camouflage one. But... No, I no, I know, I know it's the non camouflage. I like that one a lot. That's one. Um, that's probably my favorite beast hunter. What I, what I love about that group too is that it is total. Like that whole group costs nothing. It's like it's air, but it is just aro. Like shoot the warcore idiot. Spend probably four orders killing those two warcore on your first turn. Um, yeah. I dare you. And if you go first with that, your opponent, you can just be like, I'm going to spend. Uh, three command tokens. Three command tokens. That peacemaker is going to come and fuck you up. Um, so I really like what what Brunix is doing here. This is a cool list. I think his so his second list is running a Securitate core as the entirety of Combat Group Two. I have a real soft spot for trying to make that work, but I don't know if Securitate. Uh, I assume there's a good reason why why they've run that and that there's rationale for it. Um, but this this first list is doing a really good job trading on. Trading on one of the strengths of this faction, which is okay, one Uberfall Commando, uh, Eclipse Smoke, uh, Senior Massacre is present, but then bolts, 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 dude, bolts like... with a close assault, bolts with close assault options. And what's interesting is it looks like he's got six linkable troops here. So it's yeah, it's four bolts and Hannibal and Valkyrie, and those are all bolts. And then we have Senior Masakare, who's a Forco. Um, so I wonder how he linked those. I wonder... You could feasibly run Masakare unlinked, and then the rest in... And, like, another Bolt... Un Hannibal unlinked, and the rest in a five-man core. You could run them in two, three, three per core. You could actually run a very viable two times three link set up there, because Valkyrie and Masakare are both close assault options. You have... God, this is pixely as hell. Um, Once again, blame it, Trent, not me. It, it looks like we've got one. We've only got one MSV bolt, so I don't know what the other one. I can't tell if there's another gun. No, there's a Spitfire in there. Okay, so we've got. You could you could run them either as one big core with backup, like multiple backup elements. You could feasibly run like just Massacre and a bolt Spitfire as a like fuck you duo or about Valkyrie doing this. Uh, you wouldn't could fuck you duo, honestly. Yep. Or you could run them as, as teams of three, where you have, like, Hannibal. Because Hannibal has strategic... You have to decide at the end of the game, but Hannibal has strategic deployment. 
So you could strategic deploy him, Valkyrie, and the Spitfire. You mean bolt. Strategos? No, no, strategic deployment. That's the What's um, that? uh, that's the one where the link that he's in gets plus four deployment. Oh, didn't know that at all. That's cool. Yep. It's a very rare skill, but you could have him and the Spitfire and Masakari, for example, or Valkyrie, um, or even you could you could configure that with like five of them. Um, you could go like him, Spitfire Bolt, Valkyrie, Masakare, and then the other three bolts uh, as the sniper core. Okay, I like this. I think that's really cool. The, the points knock, cost are among knock, the most cursed I've yeah, ever that, seen. That's, yeah, I'm about to say. That was literally what I was about to say. He's got the point. He's got the most cursed. 298 points and 4 SWC causes me near physical pain. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at that. I get sad. Uh but but that's that's cool. Okay. Um look off off the back of that. Um let's it one like one adepticon. Um and that's kind of cool. It has that list absolutely has weaknesses. There's a single yes. two wound model in the entire list. You yeah, you are if you lose some face to face rolls, you're gonna start having a very bad time very, yep. very quickly. If um if like the, the you have so you've got three pupniks and an oxbot, you have some ablative like you have elements that can screen. Um and you have a bolt call linked ARO. Like it's really good. Um with a paramedic behind it, which will do the trick from time to time. Um yep. let's let's chuck that like firmly in the middle of of the B tier. Um there are I, god damn it, I almost want to put that in the Toha zone because a lot of people are not going to know how to deal with the combination of like the start. That's a, that's a genuinely unique list. I, we won't because I think if you play against that twice, you'll understand it. Like you'll understand why the list is good. Well, you, you start being able to break that down very quickly where yep. it's stuff in the Toha zone. It's like you could be five games in going. Ah. Um. Yeah. But the, the, yeah, like, but because, because a lot of those things in the, like Toha, for example, um, are so off kilter, but yeah. I think I think Brunix here has found a very very interesting way to leverage all of the different things that Foreign Company does. I'm actually going to move up on the spot. That's really cool. Um, yep. So I'm so well done there. All I'm right. Uh, second to last, Dashat Company. You are the Dashat man here. Um, I've watched your battle reports, and Dashat seem very very cool as a faction where you get to have your cake and eat it too. That's pretty much their wheelhouse. Yes, um, they they top out like there are certain things with Dashat where you frankly they're next to Yuching. They're the faction that wishes it had like three more combat group slots. I would yeah. pay physical points or SWC for more combat group slots, and you do feel those limitations sometimes. And they're almost in some respects like I don't think there is any faction that wants to run more irregulars but can't run more irregulars. Like my dash at company lists will often have five irregular troops. They have no business having doing that. It is so difficult to run that many. Yeah. But they're so good. <laughs> they're so good. <laughs> um they I they feel to me like they fit right next to Caledonia for many of the same reasons. The strengths are strong, the weaknesses are evident. Um they have one hacker that's worth a damn. They have no killer hacking. But they do have a hacker, and they do have a pitcher, and they have... The Maggery Brigade is never more affordable than in Dashat Company. Yeah, that makes sense. To so, me, slap bang, middle of the B tier. Um, that The good things about them are very good, to the extent that, look, sometimes you'll run into the... You, the, the worst matchup, honestly, I feel like I've had for Dashat Company is playing into an avatar piloted by a player who knows how to keep it out of melee. And that's just Ooh. rough, because uh. you sit there trying to shoot the thing with a Maggery and it sucks. Ugh, yeah, that's horrible. I'm. Um, but ugh. with that kind of caveat, um, yeah, just uh, like you, you can go to anyone who wants to see a back dash out can go to my YouTube channel because you're here already, so it's not that very, not very, not very difficult, and just just jump into some of the dash out company videos. They're very cool. All right, finally, finally, we have white company. White company. I actually like where you had them just then, where yep. they're in the middle of the two pano sectorals, a pano and a pano sectoral. Between pano and vanilla. Yep. I. I like it. It's you that, the that. it's a very, very obvious faction of like here are the good things from Pano you get, here are the good things from Eugene you get. Have fun playing with your toys. Yep. They they are to be honest, if you if you just described White Company to me in certain ways, I'd be I'd be confused that they are only a B tier faction. Because it's like, hey, it's a lot of the best gunfighting from Pano. 
and smoke and stuff from That's YouTube. That's a kahu, like... Um, to be honest, to be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be the N3 player for a second. If you came to, okay. uh, if you came to an N3 player and said, "Hey, there's a faction that has linkable nisses and smoke," uh, they'd shit themselves in, in downright terror. Um, how time has changed. <laughs> but uh, the so White Company for me, uh, one of those factions where. I hope you like single wounds because yeah, that's you. You're gonna unless like, you're unless you're running like a Guija, like because the the heavy infantry are very vanilla and they don't quite get across the line that well. Um, yeah, like orcs with no composition bonuses. You can like no one's gonna run a five man orc team. It's just not happening. No one's gonna run a four man Jujak team. It's not happening. What you do have is you have Lankai and Peacemakers. Yep. yep. Varangians are not my favorite source of smoke, but they'll do in a pinch. Um, it it to, is what it is, right? Better to have like... some. Yep. The Varangians are basically really, really shitty Dadarazi, but Dadarazi are very, very good, so that's kind of okay. Well, yeah, being a shitty Dadarazi is like. Is not actually not the a worst bad place model. in the world to be. Yep. Um, but I, I think probably the game that best exemplifies the the. The entry point, the entry point to White Company, where you just you you don't think about their weaknesses and you just you just pick all of the good stuff and that's your list. I think is the game that Ed and Ivory played at Anzac Cup, <laughs> where um, Ivory had a list that can best be described as just all of the good stuff. And what what unifies all of the good stuff in White Company is that with like one and a half exceptions, it's single wound across the board, and so a no ammunition type, backfire squallow, bombed one company <laughs> out, and and that's to be and, fair, it's it's poetic in terms of who it happened to. Deeply, deeply poetic. Um, but uh, and that's that's why, like, that's the white company. Like, oh, I've just taken. Like, you could just do it. You can do a list. You can be like some fusiliers. A, I'm just reading out the factions. Some fusiliers, a Denavis, um, some Kahu. Let's take multiple Kahu. A beast hunter. Uh, let's add in. Okay, so our first nominally multi-wound model is is John Hawkwood himself, and then we'll add some remotes, Varangian Guard, and Lankai as our second. Like you have two models in the entire list that have some no wound incapacitation. Um, that is bleak when you say it like that. <laughs> and like all of those pieces are really good. Like peacemakers are good. Uh, Lank like Lankai is excellent. Hawkwood's a bit pricey, but like it is exactly the faction where. If your opponent just like jumps you with a Libertos or spec fires you, like it's it's hilariously, I wouldn't even call them vulnerable to guided missiles because anything that hits a car who kills the bastard. So it's genuinely like it's vulnerable to Yan Yans, and that's hilarious. Like in in twenty in the year of our Lord, twenty twenty three. The idea that there is a faction that is cripplingly afraid of Yan Yans. That car, that car who going up to heaven, his friends are just like, man, what happened to you, fat Yan Yan baby? Um, but the good things about like the strengths of White Company is it's like, yeah, it's got smoke and Kahu in it. What more do you want? It's got smoke and Kahu and a hacking device plus. You tell a Panoshianian, like a career Panoshianian player, that they have to like if if a Panoshianian player signed a deal with the fucking devil and didn't read the fine print, the faction you would get is White Company. That's a really good way to describe right? it, honestly. Um, where they sign on the bottom line um, in exchange for, for smoke, for smoke and a hacking device plus, and and they just didn't check to say, I'll still get my Kahu, right? A hundred percent, hundred percent, son, just sign here. Um, you would get White Company. And it is not by any means a bad faction, but it sits in the B tier because its strengths are strong, but its weaknesses will sometimes run you out Thank of a victory. You. Yeah. All Holy right. shit, we fucking got through it. We did it. Uh three hours, eleven minutes and fifty four seconds at time of this recording. Wasn't gonna be, this wasn't gonna be a podcast. I thought you said <laughs> Um I hope everyone has enjoyed this. Uh very tentatively we might just do this again in a year or something because that feels like the right amount of time. Um more likely fun. more likely uh N song is going to come out and the reinforcement mechanic will arrive and who knows what the fuck that will do to the game. Uh anything bets are on anything between nothing and revolutionize it. Um we will see. 
Uh, but for now, I hope people have enjoyed this lengthy discussion of every faction in the game of Infinity, ranking them in a tier list. As a reminder, the Toha zone does not mean better than an A, it just means highly variable performance. Um, it's, you, we, it should... that. It should read the Toha Zone in fucking parentheses. Results may vary. Results may vary. Someone's going to screen like clip this and share it, so I'm just going to put that in now. Results may vary. There you go. Nothing um, Nothing in S. That's honestly surprising. With considering... argument over both Aleph and... and two Jemai, factions, yeah. yeah two I think Tar... Look, look, I tried to get Aleph in S because I've already been excommunicated from Geelong, so like I might as well... I might as well wear my cross on that one. Um, in any case, Jordan, it's been wonderful to sit down and chat with you. Um, Absolutely, and man. for everyone who's made it all the way through this video, if you have questions, pop them in the comments. Um, as always, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.